I hope there is one important thing to remember. That is very important. Ok, la seule chose que je veux prendre, c'est lorsque je parle, écoutez-moi. Ça, c'est quand même important. Who knows Peter Principle? Who heard about the Peter Principle? Ok. Peter Principle is people that get incompetent in their job. Le principe de Peter, c'est des gens qui atteignent le niveau des compétences. We're still here. We're leaving in a few minutes. Normally, I go to a place that I like very, very much to go. I'm going to go to that church. Je vais aller à cette église que vous voyez là-bas sur le coin. D'accord? La raison que je fais là, moi, moi, il y a deux pauvres. Deux pauvres. Maria Thérèse, Mother Thérèse, she came in. Maria Thérèse a été là. Also, Tom Hanks did the movie Angels and Demons. There. Tom Hanks a tourné un film là. And also, the altar of that church is the same altar in the Vatican. So when they did the movie Angels and Demons with Tom Hanks, it was there. So the movie was not turned in Montreal, it was turned here. It was not turned in Rome, it was turned here in Montreal, so we're going to see it. Even though we're 51 people, I'm still going to do it, okay? It's my birthday, okay? Okay? Même sur les 51 personnes, je vais aller à cette église-là, ça vaut la peine. Et puis même sur les 51, on va on va s'en sortir, okay? And I'm living in two minutes. Je parle dans deux petites minutes. Oh, we're leaving about two more minutes. Let's get this on the road. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Hi, Bounty. How are you doing? Hi, doing Bounty. Welcome aboard. Yeah, good day. Good day to you, or the evening now for you. I don't know what time it is. I know he's a right now, if uh, one but, uh, or uh, thirteen ten over here. Like this? Oh, yeah. oh. I know he's a kid. He's a kid. Thank you. So we're gonna have a fun time today. So we're going to be leaving in about two, three minutes. So we'll see you in two, minutes. Well, it looks 
are gonna be happy. Have to wait a little bit longer, but hopefully we'll get get going on the road. I had to take a look around. I think they're still doing another like final count here. It's supposed to be 51 people on board. Six, 28, 30, 31, 33. Okay, so we're 47 and maybe we'll be four others, but uh, I'm going. Okay. I'm going to the church. It's my world record. I never went to a church with 50, 47 people on the bus. So it's a thing that you must see, and I think you're going to like it very much. Je n'ai jamais été à l'église avec 47 personnes, mais je vais le faire. J'espère qu'elle vira. Exactly. Yeah. Here we go. Let's get going. And just follow me. Oh. After that, we're going to do all the tour of the city of Montreal. Here. Now, right here to your left, about the gauche, that is the Sunlight Building. See, it's the Sunlight. During the Second World War, all the gold from France and England was there. You had for one billion dollars of gold at that time. That's a lot of gold. It's this côté, c'est la Sunlight, about the gauche. Et pendant la deuxième guerre mondiale, tout l'or de la France et l'Angleterre était à cet endroit. And up to 1931, it was the biggest British Welcome building aboard. of the British Empire. Welcome aboard on this tour. Et en jusqu'en 1931, c'était l'édifice le plus haut de l'Empire britannique. Oh, mais... Ah, je voyais rien. Vous allez checker. I'm just going to check the church to find out if I'm allowed to get in. I think so, but I'm just going to check. Je vais juste vérifier si j'ai la permission d'entrer dans cette église. Je vais ôter. Et... Euh, <coughs> Give me a minute, I just want to check. Hey Fonz, how you doing? Okay. Well, right now it's luckily it's dry, but it is pretty cloudy outside. So hopefully it doesn't rain. Just a minute. Okay. How many people there? Just one? Okay. So we're going to be 48 all together. On va être 48 on the départ. Okay, what I'm going to ask you, please, check your numbers, because when you're going to get in, the number you have here is the number that you're going to be sitting in. Okay, regardez vos numéros en haut. What number are we? Parce que c'est que vous allez avoir lorsque vous allez revenir, d'accord? Now, just wait for me one minute. Attendez-moi just a minute. The size again, 16, 15. Okay. All right, you can take a seat right away. <laughs> Okay, please stay seated. And look at their numbers. Regardez vos numéros. And I'm coming back in 30 seconds. Je reviens dans 30 seconds. Right, looks like we're gonna take a little tour inside the the, the basilica, inside the church. So, yeah. Yeah. so we're gonna be touring inside the church, inside the basilica. Yesterday, I passed by it when I first got here. There's the train station over there. I don't know if you can see it right there, the corner. Yeah, right there, the corner. So it's deep underneath it. Yeah, so let's take a look see how the church is going to be.
We are lucky the mass just ended oh, wow. so we could go. Nice. We're going to get, get off right here. now. Let's go to the We're going to see, the, see uh, the mass or the church inside. <laughs> Let's see how we gotta get on. Okay. Oh, you you guys are not going to be left here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stop getting out of here. Your puppy, Tata. Your puppy, puppy. Yeah, I know it will. I need some help getting up. But thank you. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I'll use this seat over there. Just go inside to look. I can remember, I'll stay, I'll stay. Need some help, sir? No, I'm good. Go, go, go. I know the feeling is, yeah. What the hell is wrong with this thing? Oh, you have to get stuck in here. Watch this. Real easy. Yeah. Yeah. Easy. I'm learning new with She's the cage. With you. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, somebody dropped something. Come, come, come. No. <laughs> she just told me to wear the trash bag. Oh. Yeah, make a comeback. Excuse me. Where should we go? Pardon me. Where should we go? Give, give Where should we go? Where should we go? Hello. All right. Now we're moving outside. Oh, it's cold outside. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, here we go. Ready, Val? You're the last one. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this church was built in 1845. Cette église date de 1845. It is the first Catholic church that was built here in Montreal on the west side. C'est le premier endroit dans l'ouest de la ville que l'église catholique était bâtie. Because in Montreal, the West is English and the East is French. And it's still like that today. Aujourd'hui, l'Ouest c'est toujours anglais et l'Est c'est toujours français. When they build that church, it cost a lot of money. Parce qu'ils ont bâti, la place a coûté beaucoup d'argent. So, Monseigneur Bourget, he's the guy that started that church, wanted help from the other parish. So 12 parish gave money. And he said, give me money and I'm going to put the parish faith here. Monseigneur Bourget a demandé de l'argent. C'est lui qui est parti tout ça. Il a dit au donnez-moi de l'argent et je vais mettre votre statut en haut. But don't forget one thing. There's always a woman involved in religion. N'oubliez pas qu'il y a toujours une femme qui est impliquée dans la religion. If you count to six, you can count to six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a lady. She's not a saint. But she had something that the other 12 parish didn't have. She had money. And I met Nelson said, Wow. Et à cause d'elle, ils ont pu yeah, partir de l'église. And because of her, they could have built that church. Let's get inside and let's see where Tom Hanks did the movie Angels and Demons. About 30 ans pour voir le film de Tom Hanks. And don't forget, you will see the altar of the Vatican here. 
There's only one photocopy in the world, and it's here. Il y a une seule photocopie de l'hôtel uh, du Bal de Quin, et c'est ici, à Montréal. Venez. Let's go. a little bit steep for my knees <laughs> to my injuries I've had several injuries I stayed me back several years ago so that's our bus right there let's go inside Ladies and gentlemen, if you go to the Vatican, if you go here, that altar, it is the same thing. Vous allez à Rome, ici, the Vatican, c'est la même chose. How many of you went to the Vatican? From your junk and Felix? Is it the same, it's the same shows? <laughs> yes? Yes? It's the same same It's the same size. Now, the reason why I'm going here is because the Archbishop that became Pope in the only place in North America where two Popes went to the same church is here. La place de ce que deux archevêques sont devenus pape et ont été dans une église. La seule place en Amérique du Nord est Guilherme et c'est ici. So let's see the two Popes that came here. Allons voir les deux femmes qui sont venues ici parmi nous. He became Pope in 1963 when John XXIII passed away. He was the Pope in 1963 when John XXIII passed away. First Pope, Paul VI, 51. But don't forget, he became Pope in 63. Second Pope, Boutilla, Jean Paul II. He came here in 1969. Boutilla, he became Jean Paul II. He was here in 1969. He came back here in 1984. Jean Paul II was here in 1984. When he arrived at Dorval, he said, I want to come here. I want to pray. He was here in 1984. In 1984, that was new because we knew that he was coming. And Jean-Paul II, Jean-Paul II, when he came here, he prayed right there. 
So maybe I'm repeating myself, but it's important. In North America, of all the churches, only one church where two popes came, and it's right here. Paul VI and Jean-Paul II, Jean-Paul II. He became pope in 1978, <coughs> he came back here in 1980. <coughs> Let's go and see Bourget. Bourget was the first that decided to build that church. Don't forget, that area was completely, and still today, English. And the first Catholic church built here in Montreal was on the west side, was here. The première église catholique est bâtie dans l'ouest de la ville a été ici. Let's go and see the Mont Saint-Jean Bourget. My God, everybody's See the service. Please come closer. He's the one, the Serena, that decided to build the church. So we can decide the Vatsilin. I forget. Big big English. No Catholic church in the area. And he said to Monsignor Bourget, I'm gonna do it. Monsignor Bourget, c'est celui qui a décidé. Une décision politique d'avoir une église ici. Il l'a fait. Now, there is 18 archbishops that are buried here. Il y a 18 archevêques qui sont enterrés ici ou qui sont sur place. Il y en a quelques autres un peu plus loin. There's a few of them on the other side. But here is the first one and 18 others to follow. Ici, Monseigneur Berger et 18 autres vont suivre. Now, 19 of October, 1987, Mother Teresa came at that church. I'm going to show you where she prayed. Mère Teresa was ici en 1987, le I was there because I was a journalist at that time, a young journalist, you know. And uh, I quit because I was tired to work weekend. Guess what? I'm still working. <laughs> Let's go. When she arrived here, the 5,000 people went to her, and they had only one thing in mind. They wanted to be touched by Mother Teresa, because of that, when she touched the miracle, she felt better, and everybody wanted to be touched. 5,000, 100 policemen. Who do you take one? Who do you take one? Who do you take one? They were. Men, si ils avaient 82, 83, 84 ans, tout le monde va se faire toucher par Mère Teresa. And the 100 police, they're gone. And who resolved the problem? Qui a réglé la situation? Mother Teresa. You know what she did? And I was there. And I'm going gonna, gonna to know it very well because it was one of my few assignments when I started the business. 
she just did this. Okay. Exactly what she did. Okay. Je vais juste vous montrer que ce qu'elle a fait lorsque les gens étaient un peu trop sur le monde. She did this. And she said in Latin, you are all correct. You are all blessed. You are all and uh, the people were looking at themselves. Les gens se regardaient entre eux. Et ils se disaient, and they were saying to themselves, Je me sens bien. I feel better. <laughs> you know what? I never seen miracles in my life, but I think that was a miracle. Vous savez des miracles? Je pense que j'ai vu un miracle. I think I saw that. Don't forget, 411, 95 pounds. She had a lot of power. Let's go and see the altar of the Vatican here in Montreal. Did you feel better? Yes, I felt better because I was afraid that the 5,000 people and the 100 police, they really, I didn't want to, you know. And can you imagine all the journalists and the press that the listen? Yeah. Okay. Let's take a closer look. Very godly one. Okay. Very, very poorly. This is where Mother Teresa came to pray. She put it here in Montreal. Wow. Sorry. When, in 1984, when he came here, the first thing he'd done to the Archbishop, he gave a rosary. And that rosary is right here. And I'm going to show it to you. Lorsque Jean-Paul II venu ici, il a porté un chapelet pour l'archevêque. Et je vais vous montrer le chapelet. I'm going to show you that beautiful rosary. And don't forget, his favorite color was blue. La couleur préférée du pape, c'était le bleu. And that is the rosary that he sent to the Archbishop here. And it's there since 1984. Take a look. And what can I say? Qu'est-ce que je peux dire de plus? That beautiful Galdican. You go, to, you go to Rome, you're going to see the same thing. Vous allez à Rome, mesdames et messieurs, vous allez voir ce bas de quin. C'est la même chose. Same height, same style, same color, and same design, and same uh, product. Same, same thing. C'est la même chose. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got 1.35. I'm giving you 10 minutes, 1.45. 10 minutes to take a picture, to go around, to feel the place. And in 10 minutes, come outside and the bus will be there, okay? Just do what you want to do. I'm giving you 10 minutes. Je vous donne 10 minutes, Mr. Dan. Let's take a quick look at everything. So we've got 10 minutes to look around. It's a beautiful altar. Look at that. Let's take a closer look. It's fine with me. There's a lot of scripts all around the building or all around the, the walls. It's all in Latin. I don't know if you can see that. It's just pretty sad. It was all in Latin all around us. They said they have the exact same altar that they do at the Vatican. Wow. 
Rosaries were smaller. <laughs> That's the biggest rosary I've ever seen. I know. Yeah, I know because they're tiny. The ones I'm used to, are like always having small little beads, but those are large. It's gorgeous. I'm not Catholic, but my son in law and his family are, and I'm going to say, This is a rosary some pope gave somebody. <laughs> <laughs> not pope. But like in the Catholic Church, uh, yeah, like the bigger the beads, the more important people you are. Oh, yeah. The bigger the beads, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Especially yeah. that's like ornate, see, like it's in gold, and I don't know what material the beads are made of. It must be very special. Usually you'll use like the, the highest quality type of material. Yeah. Especially all marble here with the statues. Oh, okay. Wow. Make our way around. Station on the cross. That's only we need it. See all around the building up there? It's all there. still all the land all around us. You can make actually donations here using your credit card. Wow. Gets more secure than actually donating money. Won't get won't get robbed. Even the church now is all modernized digital. Outside. Oh, looks like it's raining, pouring down outside. They got a little boutique over there. Oh, yeah. It's coming down hard outside. It's coming down hard outside. Pouring outside. Uh -oh. It's still raining. Yeah, it's, still it's only light. Let's go around this way. on the bus before it gets even worse here.
Ready. Yeah, it's coming down a little bit harder. Yeah, not too hard. I guess it's light. A nice little mist, maybe. Everybody get on board. Well, I can see it's coming now, but uh, yeah. at least I had a still having a good time. But I wish it was better. You know, beautiful sunny day. Can't have it all. Get on board. One more. Here we go. Yeah. Well, we walked over there and they said we had to go to the stairs. No, we've got everybody to accept the stairs. Excuse me. Saluda gente. Con permiso. Con permiso. Perdón. How was it? It was gorgeous. Yes, it was. It was beautiful. Excuse me. Can somebody ask the driver where the light is in the toilet? Can you ask the Excuse me, driver? Is there a light to turn on in the restroom? Well, he has to turn the light. Yeah. Usually, when the Excuse me, sir. There you go. You're welcome. Back on board, off to our next destination. So what do you think of the tour so far? It's only one destination, but it, it, I like it. The church was really beautiful inside. Um, Nothing I've ever seen like that. We don't have anything back home like this. So we'll see what else brings us. No problem. No problem. I had to adjust myself to the far to the window over here. Oh, sorry. Sorry, but no, that's my fault. Sorry, but that. There we go. Papa, I eat some of your hot dogs. Micah, Micah, please. Yeah, it is a bit chaotic, you see. But it's going so far. It's like my... I haven't had that much experience freeing, but I'll do what I can. A lot of stuff going on. But you're right, Fonz. It is, uh, it is a bit chaotic. Camera 
to rest here. Hopefully this will work. Okay, everybody's here. Come on, Sora. Here we go. Did you like the church? Was it worth it? Yes, yes definitely. Yes, Thank you. Okay, if you come back here after the tour, go to the Queen Elizabeth Hotel. $50 million of renovation one year. It's a beautiful place inside. If you want to eat, if you have to have one dinner, go to Rosalie Restaurant. Not expensive, 18, 19, 95. Great place to go. Si jamais vous avez le goût de souper ou de dîner, allez au Queen Elizabeth. C'est très bien. Au restaurant Rosely. Now there's another place that is fun here. Don't forget that John Lennon and Yoko Ono were here in 1969 singing the song Give Peace a Chance. John Lennon and Yoko Ono were here in 1969 singing the song Give Peace a Chance. It is a great hotel. It's a blast. It's a good hotel. The Queen Elizabeth Hotel. On your left hand side, it's the ring. Oh, I can't see anything. See, let me. There's a ring right I there, but I don't know if you can see it. It's five million dollars, and it's a ring. Due to the rain, you can see it. There's three weeks. Well. I don't know no more. Of, I don't know more of it. I do not know more about it. C'est là nous ici. Ça a coûté cinq millions. C'est là depuis trois semaines. Now, the Montreal Underground shopping. Si vous si vous si vous voulez faire si vous voulez faire du shopping intérieur, go right here to your left. This is where it started. And as you see, c'est là que ça a commencé. The Montreal Underground is 20 miles of underground. Wow. 2,000 boutiques, and there's 500,000 people every day that goes to the Montreal Underground. Wow. 500,000. It's a lot of people. The Montreal Souterrain, you do mean boutique. And there's a lot of people in the underground. It's 30 kilometers, and there's 500,000 people who visit this endroit à tous les jours. That is a lot. It's all on the ground. Wow. 20 miles. Okay, how many interpreters do I have here? Uh, two, three. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, here we go. Now this is René Lévesque Street. Don't, don't forget one thing, Montreal is an island. There's two million people living in the island of Montreal, and there's 16 cities in the island of Montreal. Montréal, c'est une île que 2 millions de gens, et puis il y a 16 municipalités à Montréal. Now right here to your right, à votre droite, you see that kind of flame, artistic orange? That is the Canadian Olympic Committee Federation. Ça, à votre droite, mesdames et messieurs, c'est le Comité Olympique Canadien, la Fédération. Yeah, and that is Brother Andrew on your left. We're going to see the oratory of St. Joseph. We're going to see it's really, really nice. Voyez la statue du Frère André ici à votre gauche. On va aller à l'oratoire bientôt. Okay. Oh. It's good to come on a Sunday because normally there's less people and less crowded, less cars. Le dimanche est bon parce qu'il y a moins d'automobiles, moins de circulation, c'est beaucoup mieux. Okay, so the, the uh, 
Olympic Canadian Committee here on your right, the Committee yeah, Olympic Canadian. How about the walk? Now right here, this, this is one of four basilicas in Montreal. Ça c'est l'une des quatre basilicas Montréal. This basilica is Irish. Cette basilique est irlandaise. And we have also three French. And also, it's not facing the street. Ça fait pas face à au à la rue ici. C'est par devant. Okay, here we go. Now, what kind of job that we have in Montreal? Qu'est-ce que ça dans quoi que nous avons à Montréal? There is 40,000 people that work in aeronautics. I mean, 40,000 people building planes. That is the highest in North America. The one bidding us is Seattle for Boeing, but they have 45 or 50,000, we have 40,000. That's our number one job. Ici à Montréal, ceux qui travaillent dans l'aéronautique, il y a 40 000 personnes. The second building, the second most, uh, important jobs in Montreal is the uh, pills. Pfizer has two companies here and Moderna one. There is three plants of pills here in Montreal and they apply 30,000 people working. 30,000 work in the pill business. You see a 30,000 person qui travaille dans l'industrie pharmaceutique. Also concerning COVID. En parlant de COVID, 92% of the people are vaccinated in Montreal. 92%. 92% des gens sont vaccinés contre la COVID. Us, we listen to doctors. We don't listen to politicians. Nous, on écoute les médecins, pas nécessairement les politiciens. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, right here to your left, à votre gauche, the building that I hate the most, tax and revenue building, Income tax report. I hate that building. C'est les taxes et revenus. Mon rapport d'impôt que je fais là. Oh, I can't stand that building. <laughs> now, right here to your right, à votre droite, that is the complex qui fait bureau. This is where we go to get our passport. $165, good for 10 years. C'est là qu'on va chercher nos passeports. Bon pour 10 ans à un coût de $165. And for two months, people were really waiting in line. But on two months, les gens ont réellement attendu en ligne. Why? Because normally they give 1.3 million passport a year. But this year they were giving 3 million passport because for two years people were not traveling. So our our people working in a business are uh, how do you call that? Those people working as. Uh, What's the name of the people working for the government? Civil servants. Yeah. Our civil servants are very small. <laughs> and they work Just like, like ours. <laughs> mm -hmm. They work from 4 o'clock, uh, from 9 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Very slow. So, at least like it's ours. gone, it's okay. It's like all government people, right? Or else? Okay, I'm going to show you Chinatown. Je vais montrer le Chinatown ici à Montréal. Et c'est tout simplement qu'ici, ça prenait du temps pour avoir les passeports. OK. The best place to eat in Chinatown. La meilleure place pour manger à Chinatown, c'est à votre gauche. It's going to be on your left-hand side. Les deux restaurants, les deux restaurants, Beijing and My Fish, Mon Poisson. Right here to your left, à gauche. The two top ones. Beijing and My Fish, Mon Poisson. He said that's the best place to eat in Chinatown. Oh, Chinatown. We're in Chinatown now. Okay. Chinatown is small, it's quaint, but it's, it's nice. tiny. Chinatown, it's small. bien. <laughs> Mais, uh, c'est petit. Mm -hmm. In front of us, you have the Notre Dame Church. It's a very, very beautiful church. Devant nous, c'est l'église Notre Dame. C'est une très belle, très belle église. Céline Dion got married there in 1995. Céline Dion s'est mariée à cet endroit en 1995. And her husband passed away. Funerals were held there in 2016. And uh, Mademoiselle, uh, Monsieur, uh, le Dion est décédé en 2016. Now listen to me. 
te va bien. Is it worth it to go there to visit that place? Yes. Not today, because it's closed. But you can still see it. If you get in, you have to pay $50 each. Si vous rentrez là, vous allez payer 15 dollars chacun. But you could get in and pay nothing. Vous pouvez rentrer sans rien payer. Just say, I'm going there to pray. You'll pay nothing. Okay? I'm going to pray, pay nothing. Si vous dites, je m'en vais prier, vous allez, vous allez rien payer. Don't say, our guide, Richard, said that if we say to you that we're going there to pray, we won't pay. Don't, don't say my name. Don't say my name. Just say, I'm going to pray. And the people from Colombia, you're going to be very happy because with your accent, you're going to pray. And if you say in Spanish, uh, prayer is Catholic, they're going to be very happy to hear you. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe. But say, I'm going there to pray, you'll pay nothing. Vous allez bien à cette place-là, dites tout simplement, je m'en vais prier. Si vous dites que je m'en vais prier, vous allez payer absolument rien. D'accord? Now you know. Maintenant vous savez. You learn a lot of things. A tour, hein? Sure, long stop. I don't know what's going on in my head. I'm always there to beat the system. Je suis toujours là pour battre le système. All right. It's funny to work on your birthday, you know that? The church up there, I don't see it. Unfortunately, we're not going up there. Unfortunately, we're not going up there. I got it. I'm going to have a party tonight. I'm going to eat some lobsters. But the problem is it's a surprise party, but I know it's a surprise party. So that's going to be tough. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Monsieur Dam, that is the Justice Court on your right. Ça, c'est le Palais de Justice. Justice Court. 1970, c'était basé en 1970. And at the right, à la lumière, look, left, regardez gauche, that is the entry of Chinatown. C'est l'entrée de Chinatown. That is a gift that we received from the mayor of Shanghai in 1968. C'est un cadeau que nous avons reçu du maire de Shanghai en 1968. Okay, that building here on your left hand side, cette bâtisse que vous voyez à votre gauche, that is the biggest hospital in Quebec. Ça, c'est le plus grand hôpital au Québec. 750 beds, 750 585 doctors, 585 médecins, and more than 1,200 nurses. Et plus de 1,200 infirmières. It's big, c'est gros. Oh, yeah. Let's take oh. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Back. I want I want you to pass the test. I want you to count the cones you see in Montreal. We have 8,000 cones at the moment in Montreal. On a 8,000 cones en ce moment à Montréal. And the cones are rented, $1. So it costs $8,000 a day for those cones, $240,000 a month, and millions of dollars at the end of the year. And who pays for that? It's called the shin. I hope you won't get sick. Oh, but if you get sick, go there. It's the best place. The shoe. Que pas malade, si malade, si also, don't forget one so, thing. Yeah. You're not allowed to completely demolish a church in Montreal. Now look here to your left. Look at this at gauche. You're not allowed to demolish yeah, completely a church. So you see the steeple and after that the entry of the hospital. Regardez, vous voyez le clocher the et ensuite vous rentrez dans le pédal. Like I'm telling you, you're not allowed by law to completely demolish the church. So what happened? The discussion with the church and the hospital, they got into an agreement. The agreement is when you get in the hospital, first you have to get in the steeple. So when you go there, you have to get in the steeple first. L'entente, c'est que lorsque vous allez à cet hôpital, vous allez rentrer en premier lieu par le clocher. Et ensuite, vous rentrez à l'hôpital. C'est assez intéressant. Vous devez passer par le steeple pour aller à l'hôpital. C'est comme un grand grand
Ladies and gentlemen, we are now in the old port of Montreal. Nous sommes maintenant rendus dans le vieux port de Montréal. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the oldest street of Montreal. Ça, c'est la rue la plus vieille de Montréal, la rue Bon Secours. Now in front of you, that church is the oldest church of Montreal, 1693. Notre-Dame du Bon Secours. Devant vous, vous avez l'église Notre-Dame du Bon Secours, qui est l'église la plus vieille de Montréal. And look to your left. Regardez à gauche. It's Marc Pierre de Calvet. That is the oldest restaurant in Montreal. They closed their door because of COVID, but they're going to reopen it next month. 725, the restaurant, you see on the right, which is the of Montreal. We have closed it because of COVID, but we will open the doors very soon. Now, in front of you, the gray, uh, that is the, uh, in front of us, that is the market, the Bon Secours Market. And one time from 1855 to 1867, it used to be the capital of Canada. De 1855 jusqu'en 1867, c'était la capitale du Canada. Le marché bon oh, wow. These streets here are very narrow. How is going to get through? The original what? Sorry. Okay. Yeah. What is he doing? Is he allowed to be there? I understand. He's from New Jersey. Je comprends. Il est de New Jersey. <laughs> when I see people from New Jersey, I say to them, which exit do you live? Okay, here we go. Uh, he's not going yet. Hope we lie. Now we are at the old port of Montreal. There's some in the port of Montreal. What you want to see? And normally that's my stop number two. Normalement c'est mon arrêt numéro two. Now look at all those people waiting for the double decker. Do you think they're happy? Regardez les adroits. Tout le monde qui attend le double decker. Pensez-vous qu'ils sont contents? Yeah. Not today. Looks like an amusement park over there. Okay, I'm going to show you the oldest hotel in Montreal, 1799. Je vais vous montrer la plus vieille. Uh, Hotel Montréal, right here to your right. Hotel Rasco. Oh, actually, some people over there. I like to see. 1799. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you ever come back here again in the old port, that's the place to go. That's the place to be here on your right. Si vous revenez dans le vieux port de Montréal, c'est là qu'il faut aller. Ça s'appelle la place Jacques Cartier Place. Singing, dancing, entertainment, uh, boutique, shopping places, that's the place to go. I know it's raining, but if you want to go back, go right here. Good restaurants, eight of them. You'll be bored at 7 a.c. and you Oh, water is good. The oldest house in Montreal, I was asked the question, it, it, and you're going to see it, that house is called the Brittany House, from Brittany, France, 1745, and you'll see it. On pose la question, quelle est la plus vieille maison à Montréal? Elle date de 1745, et c'est une maison bretonne en France. Because the French people living in Montreal, they come from Brittany, and they come from Normandy. Les Français qui demeurent à Montréal sont des gens qui sont originaires de la Bretagne et de la Normandie en France. Right here to your left, it is the Science Pavilion, and that pavilion is free. 
à gauche, le pavillon des sciences. Il est gratuit à Montréal. OK. Now my next stop is my third stop on the double decker. This is where my dear friend Maisonneuve landed when he came to Montreal, the 17th of May, 1642. This is where he landed. Devant vous, vous voyez un musée qui s'appelle le musée Pointe à la Calière. C'est là que Samuel, je veux dire, Monsieur de Maisonneuve, est arrivé pour la première fois à Montréal le 17 mai 1640. Et ça, normalement, c'est le troisième arrêt. Normally, that is the third stop on the double deck. And nobody is eating at the moment. Personne qui mange en ce moment. Yeah. And don't ask me what's going on here. People are listening to tour guides. Where they're on the ground. See the gens écoute les guides. Oh, you want to get it? Oh, it's a free day today. Okay, it's a journey gratuit. Hey, I'm going to show you some stones from the 17th century. Je vais vous montrer des pierres qui datent du 17e siècle. Right there. That is the oldest stones in Montreal. Ça, c'est les plus vieilles pierres de Montréal. Montreal, huh? Now, this building right here. Right there, where you see those stones. Do you see it? Right there? Yeah, inside. Oh, inside. Oh, inside. Inside. Yeah. 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 The, uh, the, uh, the foundations. It's because, yeah, because uh, my dear friend, the uh, Maisonneuve, when he arrived here, he built. And he built right here. Because this is why uh, the, uh, the place is here, because he arrived oh, here. Okay, now you see the foundation right there. I should call that tour the umbrella tour. Yeah, that is old Montreal. The that's first place Montreal, that I show you, the Place so that Cassis, that's the place to go. Okay, even though it's raining, go there. This afternoon at night time, it's good. Or wait tomorrow. But that is the place, that Place Jacques Cartier. So if you're not sure what it is, just ask the people, where is City Hall? So when you see City Hall, it's just there. Do you like do you like those buildings here on your right? That used to be the prison. Wow. Now, prison. Then, Let's take a look at the prison. 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 Okay. This is John Young. He was the first director of the port. C'est la statue de John Young qui était le premier directeur du port. On your right, à droite, that is the most expensive condo in Montreal. C'est le condo le plus cher de Montréal. Even though it's the most expensive place, look here to your left, that is the most ugliest building in Montreal. <laughs> Regardez cet édifice à votre gauche, c'est complètement <laughs> dégueulasse. And you know what? It's a landmark. C'est une place historique. Why is it a historical place? That is the first silo in Montreal. So when the grain arrived from Regina, those places, Alberta, this is where it happened. And this is why the first silo, it's a place that is landmark. And guess what? We have a prime minister. His name is Justin Trudeau. And you know what he wants to do? He wants to sell it, and they're going to do a condo there. Can you imagine the condos? It's possible, wow. but it's going to be expensive. Là-bas, c'est le premier silo de Montréal. Et puis, c'est un endroit historique qu'on ne peut pas démolir. Mais on pense d'en faire des, euh, des condos à cet endroit. Yeah. It's going to be uh, quite special. Because I'm a tour guide. Yeah, Mississippi. Yeah. 
There's a question I asked before to the people, but I don't have it with me. I think there's four states, name me the four states that it's names of president of the United States who were president. Madison was one of them, Madison. No, 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 but Madison is a city. It is, right, okay. I mean, names of city in oh. states that are, okay. I know Madison exists. He was Jackson, a president. Jackson, Mississippi. Which one after? Jackson, Mississippi. Jack, yes, Jackson, Mississippi. Jackson was the seventh president. <laughs> yeah, Jefferson City is which state? <laughs> Missouri. Missouri, okay. And there's one more. Yes, you're, my God, were you a history teacher, sir? Mm -hmm. Okay, congratulations. Which city it is in every state? I don't know. Greenville. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. There's one, yeah, Greenville, South Carolina. Okay, listen. Washington State. Another city. Yeah. Okay, I've got a good one for you. What is the name of the second smallest state in the United States? Alaska. Second. Hawaii. No. Alaska. No. The second smallest state. Delaware. Delaware, Delaware. is number one. Because everybody knows that the smallest state is? Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, last one. Where, where, in which state and city that here. the biggest house was built in the United States of America? Which state that the biggest house was built in the United South States? South Carolina. Okay, somebody said North Carolina, yes? To build more in Asheville. Oh, God, they're pretty good. Wow. Did they watch your school, sir? I mean, they're, they're really good. <laughs> You started geography, okay. Je parlais avec des gens de l'histoire américaine. Ils sont pas mal bons. Yeah, you should have put the money on it. Should have done Okay. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, right here to your right, that is Microsoft. Microsoft? On your left hand side, that is Microsoft. That's Microsoft? Yeah. Wow. Autodesk? Wow. See, uh, oh, it's called Humanity. And it's Microsoft that put it there. La statue s'appelle Humanité et c'est Microsoft qui l'a placé là. Microsoft right there. I'm, I'm sorry. Look here to your right. Okay. Regardez à droite. Okay. This is the most richest place in Montreal. C'est la place la plus riche à Montréal. It's called Griffin Town. It's a bad Griffin Town. That place 20 years ago was the poorest place in Montreal. It was called St. Henry. And they built condos five years ago, you had nothing there. You say, go? You had aucun condo à cet endroit. And bang. Don't ask me why, but more and more people are coming to stay in Montreal. Il y a de plus en plus de gens qui s'en viennent rester à Montréal. A lot of people. Okay. Are you learning a lot today? Vous apprenez pas mal? Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to the St. Helen Island because Ooh. at the moment we are out of Montreal. En ce moment, really we're well. à l'extérieur de Montréal et on s'en va à l'île St. Helen. So we're outside of Montreal currently, so yeah, we're going to somewhere else right now. <laughs> okay. I was asked the question, how many ships pass by Montreal? There's one thing that I know. The port of Montreal is 24 miles long. Le port de Montréal, c'est 40 kilomètres de long. Also, we are the capital in North America of containers. We are the biggest place of containers in North America. Now, my question is, which American city has the most containers? I'll give you a clue, California. Port of Los Angeles. Port of Los Long Angeles. Beach. Yes, oh, Long okay. Beach is the place where you have the most containers in the United States. Okay, you're pretty good. Okay, very soon you're going to see the ugly building. Bientôt vous allez voir cette maison que j'aime plus ou moins.
Okay. In front of you, we have the Pont Jacques Cartier. Pont Jacques Cartier, the guy who built it, was Gustave Eiffel, the same guy who built the Eiffel Tower in Paris. And on your left hand side, that ugly building again, the silo, the, the silo, silo de Montréal. And the Pont Jacques Cartier devant nous, qui était bâti par Gustave Eiffel, qui a fait la Tour Eiffel. Oh, fine. Now, very no soon, to you're going to see the buildings that I like the most Montreal. from all the buildings in Montreal. Et tous, vous allez voir ce que j'aime le mieux de toutes les bâtisses à Montréal. And please believe me, it's really uh, something unique. Croyez-moi, ce que je vais vous montrer, c'est un édifice qui est très, très unique. Yeah, I know the ring sucks right now, but... Yeah. Yes, this is condos. And the people living there, they're all alike. They don't smile and they wear sunglasses. <laughs> Les gens qui sont là, ils sont tous pareils. C'est le condo le plus cher. Ils portent des lunettes, ils ne sourient pas. You know, they got those sunglasses, you know, and they don't smile. It's not it. Okay. The place that I like the most. La place que j'aime le mieux. It's called Habitat 67. Ça s'appelle l'Habitat 67. That was built during the World's Fair of 1967. Okay, listen, there's 347 cubes there, and all the cubes are all different in size and style. Il y a 347 cubes, là, tous différents de style et de genre. Now listen to this. You see all the windows? Well, when you're inside, no window can look into another window, so you can be completely naked and nobody's going to see you. Outside, it's another story, but inside, nobody's going to see you. Wow. You see, avec toutes les fenêtres que vous voyez, mais complètement nu, personne va vous voir. Now think about it: 347 cubes, all different in size and style. It's really something. Uh, yes, right there, there, yes, it's one of those individual owners. Really can't tell from here. There's 118 families living there. 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 There's 118 Ça peut se vendre entre 400 à 600 000 dollars par année. Euh, par, pour, pour le coup, je m'excuse. Yeah, in a way, and it's part of the uh, amusement park of Montreal. Ça fait partie du parc d'amusement de Montréal. Okay, on your right and left, it's the Saint Lawrence Seaway. À gauche et à droite, c'est le fleuve Saint Laurent. On your right, the bridge that you see is uh, the oldest bridge in Montreal, 1859. Okay, at one o'clock, I mean, uh, do you see that round gray light building? That is the Casino of Montreal, and that was at one time the Pavilion of France. Devant vous, à droite, à une heure, c'est le Casino de Montreal. Il y a un temps, c'était le Pavilion de France. All right, I gotta talk about that when we're gonna be there. You're probably the surplus home to Wayne. Does the St. Lawrence Seaway free over? I'm sorry? Does the waterway, does it freeze in the winter? No. Uh, not completely. Uh, yeah, it freezes, yes, but not completely. Because of the current, the current are really, really strong. Uh -huh. So the deepest, the deepest it is, it's it's tough, but it, it's it's like 50-50. Okay, now you're going to a place, and I can't wait to see your reaction. Oh, okay. I don't know where we're going, but just gonna want to see our reaction. We're kind of being Okay, now I hope that everybody will be wake up. Really?
not wait to see a reaction. We are the only company of tourism, the only company that is allowed to go there. Wow. And I want you to listen and to feel the place. the racetrack. Ça c'est la piste. Okay, go Frank. Miss Patton is number one. Hamilton is number two. And at the moment Frank is number three. He may be two. Okay, it's 30 kilometers but one day race is 300 kilometers. That is the maximum. So merci, merci là. Nous sommes sur la piste de Grand Prix. We are now at the Grand Prix du Canada racing track. This is a racing track. Yeah, you are on the track. Vous êtes sur la piste. Yes, it's a race track. Oh my god. Wow. Are you excited? Yeah, we are the only company. And I'm going to turn left here. Je tourne à gauche ici. That kind of looks like Epcot. Ladies and gentlemen, on your right, about to what? The Pavilion of the United States of America during the World's Fair of 1967. And you know what? That building during the World's Fair was the number one building most visited. Le pavillon des Stéphiens était le pavillon le plus achalandé pendant l'expo. Who was the second pavillon most visited? Quel était le deuxième pavillon le plus visité? You're going to be surprised. Russia. Why? Why states first and Russia second? Why? Pourquoi que la Russie c'était le deuxième? Yes, during the Cold War. Don't forget 67. Don't forget 1962, the blockade of Cuba, 1962. That's awesome. Boy, it was tough for me. I was a kid, 12 That's years old. Like, we were praying every day for two weeks. Okay. C'est que le pavillon des États-Unis et le pavillon de la Russie étaient le, le plus populaire. I explain and they explain two minutes more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, very soon, we shall be on the Jacques Cartier Bridge. Don't forget, we have 14 bridges in Montreal. 14 bridges in Montreal. We'll run the 
Georges à Cartier après. Ladies and gentlemen, that is uh, the St. Lawrence Seaway. Fred Salon à votre droite. And that is the amusement park called La Ronde. These are birds waiting for their green card. Oh, they got it. They're going. That is the major entry of La Ronde. That park is the, is the biggest Let's park take a look at the entrance in Canada. You see the roller coaster? Let me see the roller coaster. It's the biggest one in Canada. Yeah, that is most. Now, do me a favor tonight. Do me a favor. If you take a beer, take a Molson tonight, okay? Take a Molson, please. Please do me a favor, my God. Don't take Bud Light. We don't drink water, okay? We drink beer. But we use Bud Light to wash the tires of our cars. It's good. It's really, really good. <laughs> I drink I drink wine, but I, I drink beer once in a while. But I like to drink wine. Wow, I drink Bordeaux. Bordeaux is my favorite it's all part of the bridge. Long bridge. Okay, that is a prison. That is the British prison. Ça, c'est la prison britannique. Prison here. Prison. 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 Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to show you something really great. Je vais montrer quelque chose de réellement bien. Okay, look to your right. Regardez à droite. Do you see that roller coaster? Vous voyez ces montagnes russes? They are the highest in Canada. And that roller coaster has the same nickname as my first wife. It's called the monster. <laughs> Je disais que le surnom de cette montagne russe s'appelle Le Monstre, le même prénom que ma première fois. Mon nickname était Hell. Je suis turbulent. My mother said to me that I was an educated bum. I was against everything. I was against politics, against this. Free the war. No. Pardon? No, I was not from Germany. No, I'm from, I was born and raised in Montreal. Je suis né à Montréal. But I went two years to the States. I have studied in Lansing, Michigan. And I study also in a place called Tupper Lake. Tupper Lake is 30 miles from Lake Placid. My mother wanted me to learn English, so I did my junior and my senior. The first thing that I've learned from the state is Sadie Hawkins. That, that was really nice. Had a good time. And I pledged my heart to the United States of America. I didn't, didn't know that. He said, you should learn it. I said, I'm a Canadian. Sure, learn it. Okay, I did. But I had a good time. And I find out the difference between I like you and I love you. Because for me, love and like was the same thing. But I found out it was not the same thing. En amour, amour means love. And like means j'apprécie, I appreciate. So when you say, oh, je t'apprécie, I appreciate, it's like like. But for me, like, love, you know, same thing. But it was not. 
too bad. One thing I did like, they called me French. Or friendly. Yeah, yeah, I really hated that thing. Finally, we're on the road. Oh, yes. Okay, moving on. Mesdames et Messieurs, on voit très bien Montréal à notre gauche. C'est le Real Montreal en armée. Look at the skyscrapers. Regardez les grands ciels. They're almost all at the same height. 754 feet. You're not allowed to have a building that is higher than the mountain. And the mountain is 754 feet. Les grands ciels de Montréal ont une certaine hauteur. 754 pieds. Je n'ai pas le droit d'avoir euh, un édifice qui est plus haut que la montagne. Oh, the significance is uh, when they were building it, they didn't want it to hide the buildings. So this is why they say that if you put it out at the same height, it's possible still to see the mountain. Because let's say, okay, yeah, but listen, if you, if you have a mountain that is higher, you, you see nothing. So some of them are lower, but none of them are higher. So it's possible to see it, but if it's too high, you see nothing, yeah. Now we're going to go to the east side of Montreal. We're going to the east side of Montreal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to the east side of Montreal. And this is, in case you don't know, a very autumn day. Je tiens à vous dire que c'est une journée automnale. And I'm very happy not to work in the double decker today. Je suis très content de ne pas travailler dans le double decker. The price of oil, gas at the moment is about a dollar fifty-eight in Montreal. Ça coûte à peu près un dollar cinquante-suite le litre. Now here, don't forget, it's not a gallon; it's a liter. So you need four liters to have one Almost gallon in the U.S. Okay, I've got Kentucky here, three and a quarter. Somebody has that, has it lower than that? Lower, lower, three and two, twenty-five? Three point seven eight. Okay, one. Oklahoma is how much? How much you said? Three nineteen. She wants to know where. How much is it in Chattanooga? Oh, in LA is like six dollars. Oh yeah, okay. The less six. Yeah. Okay. Which one is the the cheapest? Okay. Okay. Us, it's about six dollars a gallon. So, au Québec, c'est à peu près six dollars. Six dollars. It's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, gas is almost. Uh, you know what? When I go to Florida, it's less expensive. When I put, I remember when I put the gas last year, it was sixty dollars. In the states, thirty dollars, and that is really full. OK, nous sommes dans l'est de la ville de Montréal maintenant. Et vous allez voir some. Uh, OK, my next stop, I hope I'm going to stop, and I will stop. I'm going to say who's brave and who's not. I'm going to stop at the Olympic Stadium. Je vais aller mon prochain arrêt au Stade Olympique. You know how many cones we have in Montreal? Vous savez combien de cones de construction qu'on a à Montréal? 8,000. I said it to you. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just wanted to know if you were listening to me. <laughs> I just wanted to know if you, were, if you were listening. Okay. Now, one thing I like about Montreal, une chose que j'aime beaucoup de Montréal, c'est qu'on n'a pas de ghetto. We don't have no ghettos. And that's a pretty good thing. We have built here in Montreal, 10,000 apartments, uh, affordable housing. In Montreal, we have 10,000 logements à prix basic. And je vais vous en montrer, and I'm going to show you some of them. Yes, yeah, subsidized, and it's cheaper. Yes. Do you know how much it costs to subsidize housing here? $325 a month, electricity included. It's not, it's not expensive. 
C'est 325 dollars et puis euh, c'est bien. That's true, yeah, because it's just focused on the ring, so that's why I get getting a bad, the bad exchange, view of the, okay, of the outside. The exchange rate is about 30%. I'm trying to like focus so out of it, yeah, trying to pan the camera out. If you have one dollar US, for me, away you're going to have a dollar window, but it's still like, yeah, yeah. it gets better. Yeah. Yeah. For but it doesn't want to focus on the raindrops. Yeah, that's what we have. Ugh. Okay, here we go. You see what happened? Now we're going east towards the uh, the stadium. Right, we're going toward the stadium to the Olympic Stadium here in Montreal. Now don't forget that the port of Montreal is 24 miles long. Don't forget that. Le port de Montréal fait 24 000 ou 40 km de long. And we do have a lot of containers. And there is a lot of police there. Il y a beaucoup de policiers qui travaillent au port de Montréal. You know why? People steal cars. <laughs> They put it in containers and it's going to Africa. So, so dogs are there to smell it. And today we have something called tag. Tag is US. Tag is the best because tag is like a radar. So in less than 24 hours, you put the tag on and you can know where is your car. So that helped a lot to have less cars being stolen. The, the worst car being stolen, and I've got it, and I had problems also with that, is on the CRV. That is the most stolen car. And after that, Mercedes Benz. Okay, right here, wow, today we're learning right here to your right, a small little park. Quite that educational, that educational tour. Yeah. I'm going to show you those kinds of houses. Okay, we'll go through it. Now look here to your right hand side, ladies and gentlemen. That is affordable housing. It's it's okay. It's, no, it's not beautiful. It's not, but it's okay. It's better than a kennel. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice $325 only for wow. months. Yeah, they're heated also. Yeah. Yeah, air conditioning also. Uh, I want to show you. I'm going to show you some that, that are built. The luxury here. Here. I'm going to show you some that are built. I'm going to show you some that are built. The And by the way, in Montreal, we have 175 parks in Montreal. Oh, that's a lot of parks. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, right here. That is affordable housing that they're building here at the moment. Okay. This is affordable housing they're being built, but see they'll be... Don't forget, there's 10,000 of them, just in the island of Montreal. 10,000 apartments. Wow. Montreal, you have 10,000 apartments. Sorry, uh, they're about 800, 900 per square It's not small, it's not big, it's okay for it to be. It is efficient. Now look here, I don't like that one. That is affordable housing here on your right. It's nice, it's okay, it's clean. That's affordable, I would there. I'm not ashamed to do that. Don't forget this, 10,000 of them. Now, one thing that is really, really nice, and shows that it's really good in Montreal, Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Don't forget, don't be a postman in Montreal. This way, you pass an effect on Montreal. Why? Look here to your right and left. You have to go up and down the staircases. Up and down oh, to put oh, the mail. You have to monter and descend the stairs. And post it's not an easy here. job. It's not an easy task. Yeah. It's called the Nicola staircase. I'm going up. I'm going down. Going up. I'm going down. So you please believe to go me. To the, gym, the postman does not stairs. need to go to the gym right after there. his exactly. job. Why you work at these now? Put those money. Yeah, you work out for the day. Oh my shit. All those stairs you had to climb. Up and down, up and down. For all the postal workers here. Okay. Wow. That's cool. Okay. I'll be dead tired just going up one set of sight. And it's perfect. Okay. Wow, that's a lot. Beautiful though. But yeah, I wouldn't want to go up those stairs. You know what? I won't forget my birthday today. The lobster is going to be good. Oh my God. <laughs> we're going to be, uh, yeah, we're going to be 10 people. But okay, it's this person. My four brothers, I mean, including myself, and the mother and the father of one. Uh, my, my, my brother has it's still rainy a outside. woman. Dad, her mom and dad are still alive. I see the droplets. We're 87, 88, so we're, we are in my Why not? So, ladies and gentlemen, let's go to the stadium. Valley del Stadium. Alright, let's go to the stadium. Uh, no, that is not affordable housing. This is people living in the, in a, in a, in a, in a place. It's called duplex and triplex. Those people own, let's say, the middle stage, but they own also the two other ones. I mean, the, oh, to the Very up, upstairs and downstairs. They live in the middle. Oh, well, that that one is for sale. Now, very soon we're going to be on uh, Sherbrooke Street. And Sherbrooke Street is the longest street of Montreal. Et toi, va-t-il sur la rue Sherbrooke, qui est la rue la plus longue de Montréal. We're going to head to the longest street here in Okay, we're getting there on Sherbrooke Street. Very soon we'll be near the, uh, the stadium. I know it's raining a little bit, but uh, let's get out, let's try it. And after that, we're gonna go to the Olympic Stadium washrooms. Now, don't forget, the Olympics were held on the east side of Montreal. In the park, it is an Olympic ont eu lieu dans l'est de la ville de Montréal. Is it still raining a lot, my dear friend? Not too much. So fortunately, we had to deal with the rain today. It was nice yesterday when I arrived to the city, but yeah, it just turned uh, to worse today. You know what? With all that rain, I think it won't be a good thing to uh, get. But but I'm gonna show it to you. I'm gonna show it to you. Okay. 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 You're gonna get up.
Okay. C'est ici que tu vas les sortir? Ok, on va les sortir là-bas. Ok. On est au... Euh, on est au... Euh, Okay. That is the Olympic. Okay, that is the shuttle I'll, yeah. I'll talk about. It. Okay, listen, listen. I do know that there's a couple that must go right away. Okay, I just want to say to you that if you take that right here and you go down one street, you're going to be at the subway. Why is the night? And why is the night? Is the green light. Okay. Okay. And also, to just before. I just want to tell you that I'm going to stop in a few minutes where you see that person there. This is where the athletes got their medals. Okay, so that is a good place. If you want to see it, go. If you don't want to go, don't go, but I'll, I'll be staying here. Okay. So if you want to we'll wait for the lady has to go and after that. Oh, looks like somebody's getting off the tour. Oh, we're going to leave. getting off right now. We're right here outside of the Olympic Stadium. Unfortunately, it has to rain today because like, uh, I was hoping for a better, clearer view for you to get a better view of everything. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, look at that. It's just raining and all the rain droplets on the windows just make it that makes it okay. more please, impossible please for the camera to, to me, focus please. on. Just focus on the yes, droplets. It's raining like hell. Yeah. So, that place that you see here on your left, on your right hand side, that is the place where the... Uh, medals were given. But where I'm going to stop, I've got a great place for you guys to take pictures of the stadium cool. and the washrooms That's at the great. same time. Thanks. So you're going to see the stadium very well. That place is only the, um, the medals. Let's take a look at them, where they have the but medals. Where I'm going to stop is, it is at, as good so right as there, where, where we're going to go. Okay? To the in other words, back in 1976. where I'm going to stop, you can take a picture very fine and you can go to the washroom at the same time. Okay? All right, cool. Okay. Okay. Mon prochain arrêt, vous allez voir le stade olympique, fait bien, se prendre une photo et aussi aller aux toilettes. And I'm going to stay there 10 minutes. Je vais arrêter là 10 minutes. So that's the thing. Now, I just want to say that there's so much concrete there, you can do a sidewalk of 120 miles long. Il y a tellement de ciment que tu peux faire un trottoir de 120 000 ou 150 km. And you, you see the cables, ladies and gentlemen? There's 36 cables, you have 36 cables. Each cable weight one ton each. Chaque cable pays one ton chacun. And the brown windows, there's people working there, there's 500 people. And it's the biggest incline tower in the world. C'est la tour la plus incline au monde. And in front of us, devant nous, the Olympic Village, le village olympique. Le village olympique est devant nous. Olympic Village is in front of us. Okay, go go through it. Here, there's a bus stand. Okay, you see that bus stand on your left? Voyez ici, right there. Do you see it, the bus stand? Voyez la place, l'autobus, où vous attendez? That is a good place to take pictures of the Olympic Stadium. Ça, c'est une bonne place pour prendre des photos du stand olympique in the bus stand. Place to take good pictures. Have you compris? You understood, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. So let's go out there. Okay. Now, to go to the washrooms pour aller aux toilettes, it is one story down. So you get in, make a right, and go down one step, okay? And if you want to buy Coke, 7-Up, uh, peanuts, things like that, go straight and make a left. But you must have a credit card. You don't use American or Canadian, okay? Time.
305. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. So we're right outside the Olympic Stadium, which is right over there. Okay. We're gonna go get up there. Like can make you think. We're across the street. So let's do that. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, pardon, pardon me, sorry. All right, we're heading out the bus, getting outside the bus. <laughs> Turn to stretch the legs. Okay, you got this. You got this. And you too, you have this. How are you doing? Good, good. Just streaming here. Sorry. Yeah, I'm streaming live. Okay. Oh yeah, it's coming down. Man. Oh boy. Whew. Had to get out. Stretch the legs. Take a break. Let's see if we can see the stadium over here. So you can see the tower connecting to the stadium and there's like several like cables that supposedly weigh like oh they they said it would weigh about a ton each each cable i don't know if you can see it from here yeah let's take a look over here Beautiful green over here. Our trees. So part of the Olympic Park. Very noisy. Pardon my my French is not that good. Something about Park Maison I Assessor Brook. I think something like that. Anybody know here? You know, anybody here knows uh, French? Maybe. So that's the Olympic Park over there. I don't think we're gonna get any closer. But I don't want our bus to leave, to leave us behind. So I think it's time for us to go back. Make our way back to the bus. Gonna put things plain right here. 
Once again, it's called what? The, the part from the cylinder? Excess ship book? Night of the Hours? Today, Montreal. Yeah, this rain, it just made it so bad. I wish it was like beautiful like the other day, like when we were in Toronto or in Ottawa. Those were nice days, but not today. Yeah, at least it's not coming down hard. It's kind of a light mist, you can see. See how much is coming down. Yeah, it's not that hard. Take a closer look. Yeah. You should only see the rain droplets on my screen, that's it. See all organized or how many decorated in Christmas lights or trees. <coughs> so this is the back of our we're going back to our bus, our coach bus. So it's called what the Chalet de Parc Maisonneuve, Rosemont, Le Petit Petri Material. I think that's how you say it. I think. Like I said, my French is so bad. All right, let's go back to the bus. Or do you want to stay out here? Let's explore it some more, let's, as long as we're here near the bus. Beautiful park. Just the wrong day to come here. But not a rainy day. It had to rain. It had to rain on my vacation. Let's walk a little bit the further. Looks like workers are getting some barricades, setting up barricades, or something like that. Probably for an event going on. Let's take a look at these. Let's get back inside. It's getting more wetter down here. It's a little damp. It is, right? <laughs> Just a little bit, right? <laughs> oh, go ahead, after you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Welcome, sir. Yeah. All right, it all came back. Stacey Hawkins Day, Little Abner, Daisy Mass, Little Abner, and Marion. Stacey Hawkins Day, because that's where the women have. All right, we're we'll getting back in the bus. I had her dad this year. Wait for Brace. Orlando Ford. Oh, lucky guy. No, I don't. We have two sons here, that's why. Okay. Right. Hey, take care. I'm sorry. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. All right. We're in bed. I'm just saying hello. Okay, okay, hello. hello. Sounds good.
to our seat. Thank you, Jared. So pray the buses and uh, airplanes here have uh, plenty of leg room. You can see my knees. Ugh. Yeah, they're still kind of comfortable, but yeah, still leg room here. Oh. I gotta charge my phone up because I just got a signal saying that we're low power. Hopefully everybody's enjoying this tour, despite that it's uh, raining, but uh, you know what? I'll take it. It's the, it, it, at least it's better than staying in a hotel, not doing anything, yeah. right? That's only the whole purpose of coming here, is just, you know, to look around and have, go on the tours. Hold on one second. I gotta clean my screen up and I can't find a napkin. Let me put it right here. I put the stays in the area. Yes, something. Yeah. Just a little bit, so if you see a big rag or big, there you go, just cleaning it. That's a little bit better.
So I don't know if the counter is correct, but I think it's already two hours into the stream. If I'm correct. So the tour is going to be about another one more hour, so I know it's about three hours. The tour is about three hours, so we got one more hour to go. There is some seal belts, but if you go to, uh, to France, to Europe, the seal belts are there since 10 years. The, uh, the, uh, la sur the Centre de Sécurité maintenant en Europe sont là depuis 10 ans. But here, we're starting. Is it uh, in the States, are you aware of that? Do you have to put your seal belt on, on the bus? On the bus? No? I don't know, like school buses they do, but not regular buses. You know, school bus, when you pass a school bus, when it's parked, you lose nine points. We have the same thing as the same thing. Yeah. But some people do. And you lose a lot of points plus $800 fine. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. And I'm going to be sure that now we will come in the Olympic We see the Olympic Stadium. It cost us one billion dollars. That could earn a milliard of dollars. One the, uh, billion dollars for that. The one market billion. is open about 30 to 40 times a year. C'est wow. ouvert 30 à 40 fois par année. But you must have 40,000 people to make money with that. Il faut avoir entre 30 à 40 000 personnes avant de faire de l'argent. So money, Sir Dan, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, uh, Billy Graham came here. Uh, the the uh, the Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd, so that attracted 40,000 people at the Wow. Yeah, Paul McCartney. You know Paul McCartney is 80 years old? He's not that at all. That's pretty good. Cost him a billion dollars. Put that on the front of today's money or back then? Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you have nothing to do tomorrow, go there to your rights. If you have nothing to do tomorrow, go there to your rights. That is the Botanical Garden of Montreal. Ça, c'est le Jardin Botanique de Montréal. It is the second biggest botanical garden in the world. C'est le deuxième plus grand jardin botanique au monde. It's the second biggest one in the world. You got a beautiful Chinese and Japanese garden. Ils ont de très beaux uh, jardins uh, japonais et uh, chinois. Now, if you want to go there, si vous y aller, take the subway. And the subway is the green line. Why is the night? So when you go to Pius the Night, you're going to be one street down. Si vous prenez le métro Pinot, vous allez être seulement qu'une rue en descendant ici. And just one street up, and you're there. Une seule rue qui vous êtes rendu. It's right there at the metro. J'ai juste avant là. You see that yellow, green, and blue? That big building is the metro. That used to be a castle. Ça, c'est un château ici à gauche. Le château du Dufresne. Dufresne used to build uh, cowboy boots for the... American and Canadian Army, and they did their money with that. Oh, no, not cowboy boots, I'm sorry, military boots. Well, military, cowboy, yeah. You're listening to me, you're listening. I did it in purpose, just wanted to know if you were listening. 
Je parlais du château du Frêne. Ils ont fait leur fortune en faisant des, euh, des souliers militaires pour l'armée américaine et l'armée canadienne. OK. Cowboys. I want to ask you a question that I don't know. General Custer, the big battle that he lost, which state was it? Montana? Montana? Okay. I just wanted to be sure. Okay. Oh, well, talking about cowboys, you know, and I, I did that too. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that place is called Shop Angus. You see, it's called Shop Angus. During the first war, the Second World War, they built tanks here and trains. And trains, trains. Ici, pendant la Première Guerre mondiale et la Deuxième Guerre mondiale, on a bâti beaucoup de, de chars d'assaut et des trains. And it's called the, Shang, the Angus Shops. It's called the Shop Angus. Hmm. You like those buildings that is, again, uh, affordable housing? Affordable housing. Wait. These are not... These are not... That's apartments, too. Yeah, exactly that. But what happened is because when you're building trains and uh, tanks, it's huge, huge, big plants. But they've done it, they re recycle. Like one of the big plants is a, it's a grocery store, a big grocery store. Yeah, and you, you're gonna see it. So they work the shop and goods, it's assez, it's assez gros, it's assez grand. And that's a place, that's a, a affordable housing right here to your right. Ça, c'est une place pour les loyers primordiques à votre gauche, à droite, m'excuse. Ça aussi, that also, affordable housing. Like I'm telling you, there's 10,000 of them in Montreal, apartment. N'oubliez pas qu'il y a 10 000 places à Montréal que des loyers primordiques. Okay, it starts here. The local shops, tanks. That was Canadian Pacific, so it was the company Canadian Pacific, so it was the train. You see Provigo here? Provigo on your right hand side, they built tanks there. On faisait des, uh, des chars d'assaut à cet endroit parce que c'est marqué Provigo. Today it's a grocery store, a big one. And here, that is the SAQ. Why? And that is all part of shops. So sit that. And look here. Do you see the no roof? The no, no, no roof place. Vous voyez qu'il n'y a pas de couverture en haut là. On bâtissait des trains à cet endroit. We used to build trains at that place. It's called the local shop. Teenagers with mom and dad. That is the local shop. That they used to build trains here. Trains, oh, trains. Homeless people. I'll, I'll t yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll tell, I'll tell you what's going on over there. Okay. And it finished here. So, so tell me this. So all the. Uh, Shops here that you see now, it was all locomotive and tanks. Wow. C'est à tous des des chars de soupe qu'on faisait ici. Et des trains. So all those shops back there, these tanks back there. And they built tanks. When they built trains, where the trains went. Et là, ce qu'on construisait des trains, je vous montrais où est-ce que les trains allaient. Right, right here, right here to your right, about that one. Les trains. Et c'est bon. And they went. Five thousand people were working in the train business, so that's how people. 
que 5 000 personnes qui travaillent dans le domaine des trains. Beaucoup, beaucoup de gens. The best, the best place for the trains, and I saw it, it's in France, okay. in Germany. Et deux meilleures places pour l'histoire des trains, c'est en Europe, c'est en France, et en Allemagne, and also in Japan. In Japan, they got a boat, they have a train there called the Bullet. The Bullet is the fastest train in the world. Yeah, the Bullet in Japan is the highest, the highest one, the best one. Le train de, de haute vitesse au Japon, so le Bullet, c'est le meilleur. Don't forget, il peut faire 173, 175 miles d'heure pour le train en France. Et c'est 180 en Japon. Yeah, yeah, but, 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 please, but. Japan is the fastest one by one mile or two miles. I check that every year. Edmonton and Calgary? Okay, how many miles is between Edmonton and Calgary? Two hours? Okay. Okay. So it's gonna take what, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? Oh, that's fine. Oh yeah, okay, okay, that's good. Okay. Is he in Jersey? New Jersey? Wh wh which exit? Which exit? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bon. On parlait des trains de haute vitesse. Et la, ra la raison pourquoi que les trains de haute vitesse sont superbes en Europe, c'est que lorsque la Deuxième Guerre mondiale s'est terminée, ils ont bâti des nouvelles lignes. Et ça, ça a beaucoup aidé. You know what really helped during the Second World War? They rebuilt the train stations in Europe, and that helped a lot. Okay. So, mesdames et messieurs, c'est le plateau Mont-Royal. Je tiens à vous dire que beaucoup de Français demeurent à cet endroit. That is the plateau. It's an in place. A lot of comedians, uh, artists, intellectuals, you know, Tour guides? No, 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 that's not true. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's called the plateau. That is the end place. Ça c'est le plateau. Des artistes, des comédiens, euh, des euh, des acteurs. C'est très euh, c'est très intellectuel. It, it's highly intellectual here. C'est très intellectuel. Je commence à voir le show. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have, you know what? There's something wrong with that tour. Beside one person, I didn't, or two person, or three, you didn't ask too many questions. You must certainly have questions. Please, I want to answer those questions. Posez-moi des questions, ça ne me dérange pas, ça va me faire plaisir de répondre à vos questions. Why this one? No, there's no open bar. But you know what? That would make sense. No, j'ai snacks, yeah. You're going to be very demented. Vous êtes très demandant. Where did the expos play? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. Huh? Hello? Sorry? Okay. Yeah, it's a church. À Montréal, mesdames et messieurs, on a 187 églises catholiques. In Montreal, we have 187 Catholic churches. Wow, that's a lot of Catholic churches.
Yeah. If you go to Quebec City, you have to go there at least two days. Because one thing is nice to see in Quebec City is the downtown. But you, you can see it in a full day. We do the tour all day. But we leave at 8 o'clock in the morning and we arrive at 10 o'clock at night. And everybody is there. Je tiens à vous dire que la ville de Québec, c'est une belle ville à visiter. On fait le tour, mais on part à 8 h le matin et ça jusqu'à 10 h le soir. OK. And now we're going to the mountainside. On s'en va, messieurs, dans la montagne. All right, we're going to the I'm going to go to the mountainside. Très bientôt, je vais aller à la montagne. Now, one thing you should know is uh, you will see. So let's see what you can see. You will see the uh, oldest house in Montreal. The oldest house in Montreal is 1754. La plus vieille maison que vous allez voir au Québec aujourd'hui, c'est 1754. So going to be passing by the oldest Now, house in Montreau, right which was built in 1754. That is the La Fontaine Park. La Fontaine Ça, c'est le parc La Fontaine. Le parc La Fontaine, c'est le troisième plus grand parc à Montréal. I don't know if you can see it well, but it's the La Fontaine Park in Montreal. The second one is where we stop for the... Uh, it's the largest park in Montreal. Uh, for the stadium. It's called it's Maison de Park. That's the second one. And we're and the second largest park was the one that we were at where we stopped the at Mont earlier. Royal park. Mont Royal park so this is, is the, the largest park. park in Montreal. Oh. So now you know. This is the largest park I'm in sorry. Montreal. Oh well, yeah, the oldest house in Montreal is where we're going to go uh, to the mountainside. It's 1754. It's a Brittany house. The Pivier Maison Montreal date de l'année 1754. Et c'est une maison bretonne. OK. No, I like that place very much here. J'aime beaucoup cette place. Everybody likes that place, except the uh, poster. And you're going to soon find out why. Ici, les gens aiment beaucoup cette route, excepté les, les postiers, les facteurs. Ils n'aiment pas la place. OK, here we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if we could have your attention, please. I know you're so excited to be here. Yay! Je sais que vous êtes très content d'être ici. So that is the La Fontaine part. And on your right, this is all those buildings with all those skyscrapers. And those houses, this the youngest one is 125 years old. Keeps on going on, look at that. I don't know if you can see it. This point, the weather, I mean, uh, so there's a lot the rain comes from the windows, but yeah, it's a pretty big years park. Years and it's all clean, it's all nice, and my God, they got those skyscrapers. It is called vernicular staircases. Like I told you before, we had big families before, so by putting the staircases outside, you have more places inside. 
La raison majeure pourquoi que les escaliers étaient très populaires au siècle dernier, c'est que vous aviez plus de place à l'intérieur. Donc, en plaçant les escaliers à l'extérieur, eh bien, c'était beaucoup plus pratique. In those houses, they have a lot of three, four, and five bedrooms, in case you don't know. Dans ces maisons-là, il y a beaucoup de chambres, trois chambres à coucher, quatre et cinq. I think we're approaching the end or the beginning of the park. Full time job to take care of the grocery. No, they don't have basement. That's not part of it. Well, some houses, the new one, you know, built... That's the whole park right there. 50 years ago, and 50 to today, we got basement. Here in Montreal, when you rent a house, it's marked three and a half, four and a half, five and a half. Four and a half means, means kitchen, living room, two bedrooms, and the toilet is a half. Okay. You follow me? Four and a half, kitchen, living room, two bedrooms, and the uh, bathroom. The bathroom counts for a half and a half. Well, I don't know, but normally, <laughs> boy, you're really tough. Are you, are you, <laughs> okay, normally at that time you had only one bag. <laughs> okay, I quit. Okay. Ça, c'est la place la plus riche à Montréal pour le côté francophone dans l'Est. On appelle ça le plateau Mont-Royal. Super de belles maisons ici. And don't forget, maybe I'm repeating myself, but those uh, staircases are unique. It's only in Montreal and North America that you have that. But it, it's called, that area is called Le Plateau Mont-Royal. The Plateau. Yeah, we're still on the Plateau. Montreal has 17 neighborhoods. À Montréal, il y a 17 quartiers. When you live in Montreal, people say, hey, where do you stay? Montreal. Okay, which, which neighborhood? Because we always stay in neighborhood. My neighborhood is called Rosemont. Okay? Um, but when you say Rosemont, in your mind, you know what it is. But if you say, I live on Sherbrooke Street corner, uh, that street, people say, yes, but which neighborhood? So, don't forget that in Montreal, you got you got 16 towns, but the biggest the town in Montreal is Montreal, but you got also 15 yeah, other towns that equals one drops. million people. So the biggest town in Montreal, or the island, of, is Montreal, but you got also 15 other ones. Yeah, you find me? The 15 other ones total one million, but Montreal totals also one million. So there's two million people. J'expliquais qu'à Montréal, c'est divisé en quartiers. Il y a 16 quartiers à Montréal. Le quartier de Montréal, c'est le plus important, il y a un million de gens. Mais il y a 15 autres quartiers à Montréal qui totalisent également un autre million. Donc, il y a 2 millions de gens qui demeurent à Montréal. C'est une île 50, 000 de long, 50 km de long par 30 km de large. And it's pretty big. No, no. How about I'm sorry. Gang? I'm sorry? How about gang trouble in Montreal? Gangs? Yeah. Okay. We have two areas that are hot spots. One place is called Montreal North and the other one Cartierville. But it's zone. In other words, it's very, very well checked. The gangs the policemen take care of it. But we do a lot of social work. We go we, we meet them. We, we talk to them. But there's one thing that is very important, and I want to be politically correct. It's very, very hard to have a gun here. Very, very hard to have a rifle. So when you have a rifle, you must go to the police to register yourself. And if they find you with a gun or a rifle that you're not licensed, you lose that right forever. Wow. And they really check you. And they're really tough on that. Yeah. And also in Montreal, machine guns are not allowed. 
The only people that are allowed to have machine guns is the police and military people. That's it. That's all. À Montréal, bien, yeah. le contrôle des armes à feu est très, très, très important. Lorsque vous voulez avoir une arme, vous devez aller voir la police et vous enregistrer. Si vous avez une arme et que vous n'êtes pas inscrit, mais vous perdez ce droit pour 10 ou 15 ans. I think for the first time it happens to you, you lose the right to having a gun for 10 to 15 years. Okay, okay. So you're the bad guy. Okay. You know what? In the States, there's 350 million people and there's 375 million guns. Or rifles. Yeah, more guns. For us, the Second Amendment, we don't understand. Because cowboys and Indians is over us for more than 100 years. But it, it's a law. It's a, I understand that. But us, it's not part of our, of our thinking. Yeah, not, not in our culture. Love for us is on our culture. That that that, that is. Good. Oh, we got the Pope over here, police. Okay, Mr. Dame, I talked with the Americans. What's going on over there? The arms of the feu. In the United States, there are 350 million inhabitants, but there are 375 million arms of feu. In Canada, when we want to register, we have to go to the police and register. Otherwise, you don't have the right to have an arm in Canada. Now you know. You know what is the crime rate in Canada last year for a city of two million people? Vous savez combien de gens qui sont décédés de façon tragique à cause des armes? 35 people, over two million. 35 dead. 35 too much in my book, but 35. Il y a seulement eu que 35 crimes à Montréal l'année dernière, une population de 2 millions. So that's really low, I think. Can I told you how many people depart for Florida every winter here in Montreal? 300,000. There is 300,000 people that leaves Montreal every year to go to Florida. 300,000? Yes, many of them. Condos, house. Every year in the winter. That's amazing amount of people. Or 300,000 people leave Montreal to go down to Florida, down to the United States every winter. Of course, this is down there the weather is great here all year long let's keep the winter harsh winters here yeah yeah je disais yeah okay je disais qu'il y avait 300 000 uh, québécois qui partent à chaque année pour aller uh, pour aller uh, dans le sud des états unis you see that guy ladies and gentlemen he's asking for money okay that is a homeless person okay he's asking money but don't forget one thing it's possible it's, I'm sorry, it's possible to eat free and sleep free in Montreal. You could sleep free and eat free in Montreal if you're a homeless person. So how come that guy is asking for money? He's asking for money for booze and drugs. Uh, they, they, don't, they live in, not necessarily in shelters, they live in places where the government takes care of them. Hmm. And, well, you know what? When you don't take a shower since three weeks, you know, you don't need a license for that. On me demande comment qu'on fait pour savoir si c'est une personne qui... Homeless people in French is... Il y a des gens... Comment qu'on sait des gens qui... Okay, the Sazebi. We call it Sazebi. People not. And there's uh, there's 14,000 of them in Montreal. 14,000. I'm 
I'm sorry? Yeah, from 2 million, got 14,000. No. You know, our government is very socialized. Notre gouvernement est très, très socialiste. We take care of them. You know, some, some of them, bad luck, you know, uh, depression, the wife left or the guy left, having a tough time. But some people, I say some people, not everybody, it's a kind of life. Uh, they get welfare, hey, $650 a month. Uh, they ask for money. They make about $100 a week. So $650 plus $400, $1,000. So they don't pay for their food. They don't pay for sleeping. So, you know, it's not bad. Yeah, tax-free also. You know, the people of the sans abri in Quebec, there are quand même beaucoup, but the state takes care of Okay, where are we now? Yeah, where are yeah. we? <laughs> I think we're lost. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh. I'm sorry, how many Americans I have here on the bus? How many Americans? Okay, I've got something. You want to be a millionaire? I'm going to show you how to be a millionaire. Okay. Okay, oh, come on, give me a break. Give me Okay. If you win at the lottery ticket in Canada, mm -hmm. even though you're an American, you will pay no tax. Wow. If you win the lottery ticket in Quebec, you will pay no tax. Ticket. So what happens? You go right here. You, you go. You go right here to your left, uh -huh. ici à votre gauche, and you get and you get your money. Yeah. And if you don't want to be uh, publicized, Quebec. they wow. won't publicize you. So you go to a bank, and you could put your money in a Canadian bank in an American account, and nobody's gonna know. About it. Wow. No, no. I'm Banking sorry. system. No. Nope. No, you won't report. When? Okay, first of all, I just want to say that that's McGill University, that is the musical department of McGill. Okay, the musical okay, department, you win, the school of music uh, for you're McGill going University. To a bank, you can put your money in an American account, and they will not say to the U.S. government that a person that is American that won the prize, and they will not declare it to the American government. Wow. No, no, they won't. Even though the Americans call and they said, you know, a girl from Jackie LaFerre? They say we don't know Jack Leclerc and it's uh, it's business and the banks don't give those information to the U.S. bank, to the U.S. government. You win, you win. That's it. That's it. Okay. I'm not sleeping at all. Je vais vous montrer l'université McGill qui est considérée comme l'une des dix meilleures universités au Canada et aux États-Unis. C'est l'une des meilleures. Ladies and gentlemen, right here to your right. You will see right. the McGill University, one of the top ten universities in North America. See it, the exists by your university, one of the top ten universities. One of the top ten universities. It's McGill University. McGill University. McGill University. Yeah, McGill. And this is it. This is McGill. See McGill, you see. That's the front entrance. That's the front entrance to McGill. Yes, wow. you pay, you pay, but not too much. No. 25% really of the nice. students at McGill are Americans and French. 25% of the students who are at McGill are French and American. If you want to be a doctor and if you're an American, you're going to pay $10,000 Canadian a year to be a doctor, to study. That's it? Wow. You're going to pay $10,000 for being a doctor. And if you're a Canadian, you're going to pay $7,500. Wow. If you want to be an engineer, a lawyer, uh, administration, you're going to pay $7,500 a year Canadian money. A Canadian wow. will pay $5,000 a year. To be an engineer, a person in administration, you're going to pay $7,500. It's much cheaper than the United States. It's going to be anywhere from $7,000 to $10,000. Now listen to this. A year. Listen to this. Non-Canadian. The Americans, what they do, and I think it's brilliant. They can say, Mom, I want to stay in those housing, uh, uh, how do you call that, dormitories. Mom says, no, 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 no. No dormitories. You're going you're gonna to stay in a condo. So the kids, they stay in a condo four, five, six years, depending on their studies. And after that, Mom and Dad will sell the condo. And the money they make will pay at least 60 to 70 percent 
of the cost of the university. So those guys are gonna go to the university for four years and they're gonna pay about $25,000. Just that. You know, it's going to cost really not too cheap to be an étudiant at the University of McGill. And then I explained to the Americans how much it cost. Okay, right here to your left, on your right, that is the most prestigious hotel in Montreal. It's the most prestigious hotel in Montreal. On your right, that building on your left is the Ritz Carlton. The Ritz Carlton. It costs seven hundred dollars a month. I'm sorry, a month. Seven hundred dollars a night, a day, a night. So $700 a night here, just stay at this hotel right here. I don't know if you can see it, it's called the Ritz Carlton. Oh, I want to stay here. $700 a night. Oh, it's a nice hotel. Oh, it's a nice hotel. Oh, it's a nice hotel. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk to you about a restaurant called the Academy. Je vais parler d'un restaurant qui s'appelle l'Academy, where you can bring your wine and beer. Vous pouvez amener votre vin et votre boisson, votre bière. The Academy is right here to your left, but not not left right away, but left. I'll show you. Beautiful hotel. And you're going to see the picture of Leonard Cohen. The mural of Leonard Cohen que vous allez voir très bientôt. I don't think I want to stay there unless I won that Canadian lottery. Then, okay. Crescent Street is a great street to go. La rue Crescent, c'est une rue qui pour rien n'a la peine. C'est ici à votre gauche. It's here on your left hand side. The restaurant is called the Academy. The restaurant s'appelle l'Academy. You could bring your wine and beer. It's not expensive at all, but you must bring wine and beer because they don't have wine and beer. You must have it, and there's no court fee. No court. Wow. Il n'y a pas de, un prix de, 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 supplémentaire que vous payez à cause que vous amenez une bouteille de vin, c'est gratuit. Le restaurant est bien calme. Ça s'appelle l'Académie. C'est vraiment bien. All kinds of food. Chicken, steak, uh, spaghetti, uh, American food, Canadian food, Asian food, because it's very international street. Yeah. Okay, it's right here. C'est ici. And look at Leonard Cohen. Regardez Leonard Cohen. Yeah, he's a mural. Mural of Leonard Cohen. Damn it. Too bad we can't see it. There's some nice beautiful son. mural of Voyez Leonard Cohen all the way down Leonard there in that Cohen. building. Uh, uh, what a shame. Can't see it. It's right there, that great that building. That is great the Museum building, of Fine Arts. Building. It's the Museum of Fine Arts. Beautiful mural. Yeah, can't see it. Because of the rain. And right here, also to your Once right, again, you have... Once again, the rain no. is... It's too bad. Take plans. a double decker. Yeah, Leonard Cohen was from Montreal. He died two years ago. He did. Celine Dion? What? Celine Dion is from Montreal area, but she's having a nervous breakdown. So people leave her quiet. Well, her husband passed away. And uh, it's... Oh yeah, she's really... Anything. On parle de Céline Dion qui fait une dépression nerveuse en ce moment. Son mari est décédé il y a deux ans et ça va pas tellement bien. OK. Yeah. Yeah, OK. I'm going to talk to you about food. Je vais vous parler de nourriture. I'm going to show you places where you can eat. Good oh, places. I'm going to talk about food. I'm like starving. Je vais vous montrer des places où vous pouvez manger. Who else is starving here? My first place and please believe me, I've, I've got no kickbacks. It is the Academy on Crescent Street, where you could bring your wine and beer. That's a nice place. I'm going to show you so three right other places about, where you could uh, eat smoked meat and pickles here. and here, all local of time here in, uh, Montreal. bagels. It's good. So food. I'm like starving. It's not and there's some very good so restaurants talk about around the corner. A couple of our restaurants where here. It's very good and not expensive. Okay, I'll show you all of that. Je vais vous montrer des restaurants où est-ce que vous pouvez manger et qui coûte pas cher du tout. Now for the Academy, you must buy wine. I'm going to show you where you're going to buy wine because where I'm going to stop the tour, it's on Peel Street. So you're going to do two streets on St. Catherine Street and you're going to see the SAQ. Buy yourself a bottle of wine. And after that, you do two other streets and you're there. It takes oh, not good. more good than seven, eight minutes to be at the uh, 
at Hello, the place Pascal, 2021. Where, How you doing? Gonna, where we're going to do our final stop. Yeah, this is my first time here in Montreal. Yeah, SAQ is where you buy the wine. Fortunately, I'm not going to be here this long. I'm going to be here about two days. Actually, leaving tomorrow. Well, we started the. Okay. Where we started the tour. What a beautiful city. From walking city distance here. to there, eight minutes. Seven, eight minutes. Not more. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this area is the most multi ethnic area in Montreal. They speak 72 languages here. And there's 112 different nationalities. Ici à Montréal, c'est l'endroit le plus multi-ethnique de Montréal. On parle 70 langues et il y a 112 différentes nationalités. Here they speak all languages except French and English. Ici, on parle toutes les langues excepté le français et l'anglais. And there's some very good restaurants around here. Yeah. My, I like Korean food. J'aime la nourriture coréenne. The Koreans are good in two domains. They are good in chicken and steak. Les Koreans sont très bons pour la bonne nourriture du poulet et des steaks. And I like and I like Portuguese food. And they're really good on fishing. J'aime aussi beaucoup la, la nourriture portugaise qui est très bonne. Surtout pour les poissons. City once I saw a little Japanese boy. He was 21, 22. And I said to him, "Where do you go in the restaurant? Good, a good Japanese restaurant. But I want to go where you go, locals. I don't want to go to those high, expensive places." He said, "Follow me." And I saw a Japanese restaurant. The place was okay. You know, not wow wow, but okay. And I've eaten the best chicken teriyaki in my life. And, and there, 80 percent of the people were Japanese. And I got in, and everybody Mark, I believe was my ears just popped, so we're what going up to elevation here. Going up, and I had a good time. Going up the mountain, I guess. Because in New York, you can eat everything. What I like about New York is the taxi drivers. I say to myself, oh, it's going to have an accent. No. Okay, I'm going to bet you $2, it's going to have an accent. No. And New York is really New York. New York is New York. I'm sorry? Oh, yes. Je parlais de la ville que j'aime le mieux aux États-Unis et c'est la ville de New York. There's a lot of construction, a lot of construction here. Okay, there is some military trucks in this area. Just look over here to the right. Les autoportes et camions militaires. That is. Oh, by the way, here in Montreal, you're not allowed to make a right turn on a red light. But the minute, the minute that you get out of Montreal, you're allowed to do it. So let's say you go to Quebec City or your 50 miles, the minute you get out of Montreal, you could do it. But in Montreal, no. Because the nicknames of the drivers of Montreal is Kamezaki. Kamezaki means suicide in Japanese language. So now you know. À Montréal, vous n'avez pas le droit de tourner à droite sur une lumière rouge. Cependant, si vous quittez Montréal, et vous êtes toujours au Québec, vous avez le droit. Et à Montréal, c'est interdit. Yeah. No, New York. Outside, but not in the city. I know that. Just as an observation. I'm sorry? The people of Montreal are very, very nice. The people of Montreal are very, very nice. Yes. Everywhere. Yes. But I think when they go in their car, they turn into monsters. <laughs> this is That's true. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I, I, I think, yes. I think, true. sir, that you are right. Yeah. I think you're uh -huh. right. I but asked the guy to let me in. We were at a stop sign. I asked the guy to let me in. He goes, no. He <laughs> wow. Out. Wow. Well, it happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah it terrible happens. Terrible drivers here. Yeah. I think there's a monster. <laughs> okay. 
Ladies and gentlemen, they're saying that I hear the drivers here in very Montreal soon, are terrible. They're nice people, but they're terrible 17, drivers. 54. Earlier, uh, my Uber driver had a bad situation with one, uh, one, one bad driver, or actually two bad drivers that were just going also, like, the opposite way toward us, toward our car. I can't yeah. Yeah, it looks like they didn't know how to drive. Okay, after the oldest house, you will see the Oratory of St. Joseph. But the Oratory of St. Joseph is under destruction, I'm sorry, under construction. They, they've been changing all the, the staircases. It's, it's, it's really awful. So where I'm going to show you is the best part. Okay, I'll show you the best part. I'm sorry? Uh, the Oratory of St. Joseph is the second biggest Catholic church in the world. Yeah. Wow. Le Retoir Saint-Joseph, vous allez voir bientôt, c'est la deuxième plus grande église catholique au monde. Okay, because of the size, the style, it is the Pope that say oratory. There's a few places in the world that you have oratory. It's bigger than Basilica. It's, well, it's the second biggest Catholic church in the world. Yes, much bigger, and you're going to see it. Vous allez voir que l'oratoire est immense. You'll see it's really big and huge. Okay, soon you'll see the oldest house in Montreal. We're going to the oldest house, house in Montreal. À Montréal, 750. I forgot what year it's building. Well, like a 17th something. But it's like the oldest house in Montreal. And please believe me, if you go to France, go to Brittany, you're going to see it exactly the same thing. Et voilà, la maison bretonne à votre droite, the Brittany house. My God, for a landmark, you should cut the grass. This is a landmark right here. That is, yeah. In front of you, the University of Montreal, the Van Wood Gaston Tiny, huh? The University of Montreal. What do you think? Did you see it? Don't put it on the video, so I want to see it. So that tiny little shack right there <laughs> looked like a shack. So maybe it's the okay, oldest house in Montreal. Okay, very soon you're gonna see the oratory on your left. Yeah, those are the oratory. Are we coming out of the oratory? Ah, what coach? We're going through the city. Look right here. What up? Oh wow, that's a big one. It's a big one. If you ever went to Paris, it resembles the Montmartre, um, Second Ecole. Oh yeah, it's bigger than Barcelona. Oh, oh yeah. I don't know if it's clearly in Paris. Remember? Alright, we're going up. Hopefully we'll get to go in front of it. And you can see it here again. You see it? Nope, not from where I'm at. Oh, it's big. No, we can't see it from where we're at. Now, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, well, can't okay. from more if you could listen to me just one minute, please. I, I have something to tell you. It's not every day that you see the second biggest Catholic church in the world. It's not every day that you see the second biggest Catholic church in the world. The one that wants to go out to take a picture, it's going to take you 17 seconds. You take that street here, you go directly where you see the green and white pole. So you make a right and you will see it. So the people who wants to take a picture of the second biggest Catholic church in the world, go out, get out. And the people who does, does not want to take the picture, stay in. Okay, c'est pas tous les jours que vous voyez la deuxième plus grande église catholique au monde. Si vous voulez prendre une photo, allez-y. Et si vous voulez pas y aller, n'allez pas et restez dans le cas. Okay? So I'm getting out to show you exactly where to go. So if you want to see the second biggest Catholic church, follow me. C'est ceux qui veulent voir la deuxième plus grande église, suivez-moi. So it's gonna let us go out to take a look at the, the second largest Catholic church in the world. So if you wanna go, let's, let's go right now. As well, this is our only opportunity here.
behind you? Oh, pardon me, sorry, sorry about that. All right, we're going outside. Stretch our legs. Excuse me. Sorry. Oh, almost said. So we're gonna see the second largest church, Catholic church in the in the world. Oh, we go down these stairs. Oh, yeah, it's the it's the iPhone 12 Pro. I'm streaming right now. Stairs. All right. All righty. Where did everybody go? Oh, here we go. Oh, they're going around. A lot of slippery spots. Hopefully we don't eat it. There we go. So now that it's not raining, well, it's still raining slightly, but it's being, at least we're not inside the bus. Already. See all these seats here? Perfect for standing al fresco. Oh wow! You gotta take a look at that. And that's the second largest church in the world, Catholic church in the world. That's so amazing. That is so awesome. Hello. Okay. Some nice little restaurants here. Very nice. Let's see where we're at right now. So let me take a closer, good closer look. Look at that gorgeous church up there. Once again, that's the second largest church in the world. Catholic church, I should say. Alrighty. All right, let's go back to the bus. I know, yeah, it's only here for a bit, but <laughs> wonderful. I wish it was better weather. Can't win them all, right? Got to be careful here. Kind of slippery. Take a look at this tree down here. Take a quick look. A lot of shops, a lot of uh, businesses here. Better hang on here. Better not eat it. Here we go. A lot of political posters that I see here. So far that I've been here in Quebec, there's a lot of political posters, I guess, other than elections. I don't know what's going on here. All right, let's get back on the bus. Say goodbye to the old church. All right, let's get back in. Sorry, excuse me. All right, we're back in the bus. Because I went there to pay this morning. I didn't want to wait till my time. Excuse me, pardon me. Excuse 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 me. 
That's a nice view. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, back on back, back on the bus. Yeah, I'm back here in the bus. Yeah, we're almost ready to go. Oh, there's, a, there's another part of this. See, nobody's actually on the top of the bus because nobody wants to get wet. Right? Yeah, this is the same uh, tour line, the gray line. That's the hop on, hop on, hop off, which is the people go to the second story or to the second level of the bus. But uh, yeah, you can tell, like nobody was on the second deck of that bus because everybody wants to get wet. Hey, I'm the same one. Alrighty. The church could, could hold 2,500 people. It is a preponderance. Wow, that that church could hold over 2,500 people or 2,500 people. Wow. Yes, yes. We. Oui. This is the BBC News. Okay. Talking about the BBC News, do you know the guy Frederick La Homestead? Oh, I heard it, yeah. Negative so writer. Yeah. Nope. Never heard of that person. Sorry? Which part? Where? Yeah, no, yeah, Kentucky, but he did also a great part in California. Central Park, New York. BBC News, yeah. That guy, Frederick La Olmsted, did Central Park, New York. But he did another part. Hold on one second, I gotta look back in. Where we're going. I'm not sure where my bad Royal right Park of Montreal is the same guy who did Central Park, New York. Same guy. Frederick La Olmsted. Monsieur Olmsted, Frederick right, La Olmsted, like, c'est lui qui a fait ce parc ici à Montréal. Le parc du Mont-Royal, mais également. Yeah, he was referred to somebody on the BBC News. I, yeah, I don't know who they're on. Who, who that person is? The biggest house in the United States at the last century. Which house? Which state? Which city? What? Yeah, yes, yes, you're right. Bit doctors are always right. Okay, he built the Biltmore in Asheville, North Carolina. Who lived there? Kirsten, the Vanderbilt family, and uh, it's him. Je veux juste vous dire que la plus grande maison qui était bâtie aux États-Unis a été bâtie par Monsieur Frederick La Olmsted, la maison Le Biltmore, qui est à Asheville, Carolina du Nord. Okay, now that guy did something that maybe you didn't know. He did all the sky, sky, and the what? No, no, he did all the gardens and all the, the landscaping of the Capitol in Washington White House, D.C. He did that. Monsieur uh, Frederick Lohmstead, il a fait tout le, le jardinage du terrain du Capitole aux États-Unis à la Maison Blanche. Well, so, so we're going to become very uh, educational. <laughs> 
which is good. And he was from. Learn something new every day. Connecticut. He said that he's Especially he's quitting us, the Americans. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. Okay, how many Russians I have here on the bus? No Russians? No, he's asking if there's any Russians because, here. Because. Uh, Not on the bus, but I know there's one on my online. You, you, you're going to soon find out why I'm talking about the Russians. Uh oh. Okay, I'm going to talk about politics. Technically, I'm not supposed to talk about it, but I'm going to talk about it. My nephew is in the Army. The unit yeah. is called the 22nd Regiment. Mm. The 22nd Regiment is the top unit, Army unit in Canada. It's the top. And that unit is all French Canadian. Copy that. At the moment, these guys are in Ukraine with the American SEALs. They're working together. What are they doing? They're feeding the Ukrainians, and also they're giving them military supplies. Do you know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about when I say military supplies? Okay, and that unit is right here. That is their headquarters. That unit during the Second World War was the top army unit in Canada. We have a Canadian Army 22nd Regiment right here, HQ. They were the first. And they're there in Ukraine. And... We told that unit right now that they're currently in the Ukraine. No, 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 no. Yeah, I just want to say that three days ago, uh, there's 40,000 Ukrainians living in Montreal. You cannot meet Ukrainian qui demeure à Montréal. 15,000 of them were at the uh, Olympics, Olympic Stadium. They were celebrating the, uh, the, the, the Ukraine, what they beat the Russians, and the, uh, many of them came back. So, in case you don't know, Putin said, oh, it's going to last four or five days, and today it's 205 days that that war is there. And I just, yeah, yeah. But I do hope that uh, they're going to win. They deserve it. Yeah. Oh, a national dish. Oh, okay. Uh, je, je parlais premièrement de, uh, de l'armée du 22e régiment qui en ce moment est en Ukraine avec les meilleurs soldats américains aidant les, américains, uh, aidant les Ukrainiens pour de la nourriture et pour du, des suppléments militaires. Ils sont là en ce moment. And uh, Poutine is our right now, favorite cemetery. lunch. Poutine oh, is nice French cemetery. fries with brown gravy and cheese curd. You eat that for yeah, one month, and they're going to call you Humpty Dumpty after that. See, la poutine, c'est le meilleur repas. C'est des frites avec de la sauce brune et du fromage en grain. C'est excellent. Okay. Oh, by the way, right now he was just talking about a dish called a poutine, you know what? which is uh, french fries with gravy and cheese curds on it. I've had, I just had actually that same version, but with so McDonald's, listen, which, listen, like, listen. within that, within, within that guy. You know what? But like, as long as we're here, we might as well try listen it out. Listen to me. Right. It's raining. When the tour will be finished, go underground. Because everybody's going to go underground. Or else, go to restaurants where you can bring your wine and beer. Because today, mm -hmm. it's Sunday. And people on Sunday, they get out, they eat at the restaurant. There's two days that are very, very heavy, very crowded. It's Friday when we finish work and Sunday before we start work. So Friday and Sunday are the two best days for eating in restaurants. Hmm. Good to know. Well, so in, Friday case, and Sunday in, in case you don't know, in the area of the downtown area, there is 67 restaurants per square kilometers so there is a lot and we have only 250 places where you can bring your wine and beer so the place that I'm talking to you about the Montreal underground there is 25 restaurants there and there's no problem yes there's a place where you could buy wine and beer it's called the SAQ yes I'm gonna pass near the SAQ and where I'm gonna stop the bus you're gonna be at Less than five minutes from there. And four, can I see your legs? Oh, four minutes. What do you use? going to be four minutes. And in four minutes, ten seconds. Okay. 
en gros stop by last place. Je vais arrêter à mon dernier arrêt, qui est la montagne, parce que vous allez avoir une très belle vue de la montagne. C'est du côté est. J'espère bien que ce sera possible de voir quelque chose avec un peu de brouillard que nous avons en ce moment. OK. But the best place to be tonight when we finish the tour is where we are at the Dorchester Square. It's the best spot. I'm all mixed up. Wokpilai. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll, we will see a little bit of Montreal. On va voir un petit peu de Montréal. We are at 700 feet above sea level here. On est à 700... So right now we're at 700 feet above sea level. That's where like my ears popped when we're coming up here. And the fog rolls in. Oof. There's no people, I wonder why. Il n'y a personne ici, je m'en demandais pourquoi. Can I tell you one thing? I never saw that weather in a long, long time. I've never seen this from the... Oh, another New Jersey guy who's parking a place in his I bet the view from here during a regular day will be so awesome, but you can't see anything whatsoever. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Montreal at his best. Montreal is so many of Unfortunately, due to well, inclement weather, just, we can't see anything. Just, just imagine a city over there. <laughs> you know what? You got a pretty good sense of humor. You would be, you, you would be a good guy. I can tell you that. Okay. Yeah, so. Cam Hamilton. So, who wants to see the fog? <laughs> okay. uh -oh. I'll sorry. pass. Is that, see, uh, this is the, uh, the point of Montreal. This is the east side of you Montreal. You see again, it's so foggy outside, you can't see anything at all. Yeah. It's so sick. No, no, it's like pea soup. Come on, okay. Yeah. Come back in September, yeah, no, okay? We are September. Okay. We are in September. Too bad that it's raining. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh yeah. boy. It blew. Did you have a good time, ladies and gentlemen, up to now? Yeah. Which one? I had a good time. Yeah, good time, great time. Yeah. Yay. Okay. Uh, if you want to buy wine, go to the SAQ for two reasons. First, there's good bottles of wine there. Secondly, it's less expensive. It's the best place. Three, it's owned by the government. So all the money it is the government that has it in their pocket. And they sell at good prices. Sorry? Excuse me. Not exactly. So there's a place here called SAQ where they sell Not beer, exactly. bottles of beer, and it's owned okay. by, uh, bottles of wine, I'm saying, and it's owned by the government. So you can see why the prices are good because uh, it's owned by the government. Ladies and gentlemen. Monsieur Dan, okay. Please, 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 could I have your attention, please? Please, could I have your attention? Because I want to be just, please. Please, here where you see all those white cones, the city of Montreal, they placed them this year because three cyclists died. Why? Because some cars were doing U-turns. So this is why the mayor of Montreal decided to put a mural here. Because when those guys are going down, they're going down quite fast. Ici, vous voyez des murales, c'est parce qu'il y a des cyclistes qui sont décédés l'année passée. Il y en a trois qui sont décédés. Et la mairesse de Montréal a décidé de prendre oh, la bicyclette de un des trois morts la possible pour que tout le monde la voie. And the mayor of Montreal decided to take the bicycle of one of them who died and put it there. So look at your left hand side. Regardez à gauche. Vous allez voir la bicyclette. You'll see the bicycle here. That kid was 19 years old who died. 
So I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a bicycle right so there hanging there. So this is why there is some memory, problems there's, um, right up the back I guess there's of the some down. bicyclists that were killed. Now don't forget, you go pretty fast. Who were coming, right you know, so and fast here on this two I, mean, I guess they got killed when uh, the know, car just like just slammed into them at that crazy turn right there. They took off. And the city of Montreal decided to put those cones. Okay. And decided to put cones back there, which I didn't I see. But, yeah, idea. but they put that little memorial with the person, with the, per, with the bicycle, the person that was killed, and drive riding in it. Okay. Now, you will see a convent that looks like a convent, but it's not a convent anymore. Maintenant, bientôt, vous allez voir un couvent qui ressemble à un couvent, mais qui n'est plus un couvent. And you're going to see it's really something really, really special. So the box is really special. Yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. Ladies and gentlemen, Monsieur Dan, very soon you'll see the content. You're going to see the couvent. It's coming, ça sent bien. Look, I see the bell, I see the cross, I see the Virgin Mary, oh, gonna... and I see Jesus Christ Superstar. Je vois la croix, so je vois la Vierge Mère, je vois la cloche, je vois Jésus Christ, notre Seigneur. Ladies and gentlemen, this right is not a convent anymore, c'est n'est pas un convent. This is the first religious condo built in Montreal now. It's not a convent, it's a condo. Monsieur Dame, ce n'est plus un couvent, cette partie. C'est un condo, une maison en copropriété. But look, the Virgin Mary is there. Yes, the Virgin Mary is there. But it's like that. It's it's a it's a condo. It's a condo. Not a convent, it's a condo. How many units? 40 units. 40 units in there. The cost, 10 years ago, $255,000. Today, it's about $450,000. Aujourd'hui, $450,000. But hey, it's a nice place to stay. It's a très belle place to stay. And at cool, first, people didn't know about condo. it. And they were seeing some young ladies coming in with shorts, really short, short shorts. People used to say, wow, those nuts are quite liberal. But it was not the case. You see, the people didn't know that it was going to be sold. They saw young people, young men, with short shorts, short shorts, and they said, oh, these girls are very liberal. It was not the case. It was not the case. Look, there's a church right there. Look, there's a church right there. Look, there's a church right there. That area is called the Mile End. In Montreal? Oh yeah, I live in Montreal. Where? Mile End. So, <laughs> so we know the Mile End is it's there. Where you stay? Rosemont. It's all neighborhoods. C'est tout des quartiers. And you know what? In Montreal, we have one mayor, and all the neighbors, uh, the neighborhoods has one mayor also. So in Montreal, technically, we have 18 mayors. That's 18 too much of my book. À Montréal, nous avons un maire pour la ville de Montréal et 17 maires pour les 17 arrondissements de Montréal. Now, ladies and gentlemen, right here, you will see the tallest monument in Montreal. Bientôt, vous allez voir le plus haut monument de Montréal. Et c'est celui de Georges-Étienne Cartier, le co-founder of Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got something very serious to talk about. J'ai quelque chose de très sérieux à vous parler. If you like my style, if you like my personality, if you like what you've learned from me, you're allowed to give me a little extra tip, and that tip I will share it with my bus driver. I do know that I have Americans, I do know that I have Canadians. Canadians and Americans were used to tipping, it's part of our uh, culture and it's part of our life. But I do know that I have people from other countries that tipping is something that is not, that you're not used to, but it's our way of life and it's our way of, should I say, our paycheck. So if you tip us, we'll be very happy 
and very grateful. And I just want to say one thing. The more you travel, the better you get. And I believe in that. And also, I'm putting no pressure. It's my birthday today. <laughs> and it's the only time that I'm allowed to say that. Yeah. I'm, yeah. And I, I could prove it to you. I've got that in my pocket. So I want to thank you very kindly. And my name and the name of Frank Beitrack. Comme je disais, messieurs, dames, si vous avez aimé le tour, vous avez le droit de me donner un pourboire. Et euh, ce pourboire, je vais le partager avec mon chauffeur. Je sais que les Canadiens et les Américains, nous sommes habitués au pourboire, mais je sais que déjà de d'autres pays, que le pourboire, c'est quelque chose qui n'est pas inclus dans vos mœurs. Mais chez nous, c'est le cas. Donc, si vous donnez un pourboire, on sera très content et on l'appréciera beaucoup. Merci. OK. This area is called the Golden Square Mile. Cet endroit, on l'appelle le Kilomètre d'Orée. All the rich people in Montreal used to live here at the last century. And today, it's all big hill buildings. Au siècle dernier, tous les gens qui étaient riches demeuraient dans ce secteur. And I'm going to show you some of those housing. Now, right here to your right, à votre droite, and that's going to be very interesting for you, that will be the new Technical <coughs> Medical School of McGill. They're going to start here on the 1st of October. The 1st of October, the students in medicine at University McGill, c'est là qu'ils vont étudier. That used to be a hospital, it was, it was called the Royal Victoria. It was a hospital here. C'était un hôpital avant qui s'appelait the Royal Vic, the Royal Victoria. Wow. And look here to your left, you see all those side scrapers of Montreal. Il y a votre gauche, vous voyez tous les... You can see the old spice for the people here in Montreal. Sky scrapers. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to show you a very important house. Je vous montre une maison très importante. Now look at that house here on your right. Regardez ici à votre droite. That house is Mr. Van Allen. That house is very, very important. That house received the first Titanic SOS call. Really? And Mr. Van Allen had some boats in Nova Scotia. And he sent the boat to rescue the 700 people. received the first SOS messages from the Titanic the when it sank back in, what, 1912? The boat was Van Allen. Okay. Mr. Van Allen. Mr. Van Allen is the first person who received Euh, le SOS so little du Titanic. Et c'est son bateau qui était dans l'Atlantique aller chercher les 750 personnes qu'il a secouru. He got the SOS. He was the closest. And wow. Well, he had, well, Nova Scotia is not very far from the Atlantic Ocean. Nova Scotia was about maybe 100 miles. Okay, he, he, no, 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 that guy was working in six provinces. He had boats in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, he had boats in Ontario, he had boats in Quebec. So when you send an SOS, a lot of people receive the SOS, but some of them were in New Jersey. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, call for help, but like a SOS. Oh, okay. Yeah. You should be a teacher, university teacher. In psychology, everybody's gonna get crazy, but it's okay. <laughs> the teachers, okay, teachers, uh, English teachers, go to McGill, go also to a place called Concordia. These are the two major the French went to University of Montréal and University du Québec à Montréal. Uh, if you went as a teacher at McGill, you were hired right off the bat. Concordia is a good university, but McGill is the top university. But uh, it's very tough to get in McGill. You have to be top grade. You know what? Molson, his son, finally graduated after six years. He taught two years. 
and his father was so happy that he gave ten million dollars to McGill University as a grant. So that is a lot of money. Molson is the company of beer, and that is the most important beer company in Canada. Molson. Okay. Now, oh look at that. We have flooding here. Okay. This area, please, please, please. That is the Golden Square Mile. All the rich people in Montreal they used to stay here. Tous les gens riches de Montréal restaient au kilomètre d'Orléans. That is Mr. Purvis' house. He was the oh, only Jewish guy. Nice Mr. Purvis invented you know, the I don't know if you can read it, but right down the side of the building, building it says McGill University, Arthur Purvis Memorial Hall. Hall. Mr. Purvis, tell me about the pencil. You can't. It's okay, right there in the corner of the building. I know you can't read now, it because of the rain, but yeah, it reads again uh, McGill University, Arthur Purvis Memorial Hall. The Peel was in the last century the richest street of all the streets in Montreal. Je vais tourner à gauche et vous allez voir la rue Peel, qui était la rue la plus riche de Montréal au siècle dernier. So from all the streets in Montreal, 70% of the people rich used to live in this area. 70% des gens les plus riches de Montréal restaient dans ce secteur. Okay, but don't forget, today it's all faculties of McGill. N'oubliez pas aujourd'hui, c'est toutes les facultés de McGill. Very nice. Yeah, this is Peel. Beautiful house. Now that, that is the faculty we'll of medicine, Kiel the Street. faculty of medicine, you see. Don't forget, people used to live there, and that was a hell of a big house. Today, medicine, faculty. There is 46,000 students at McGill, 46,000. Cannot submit it to San Miguel. Okay, so that is the medicine faculty. The next building, I like it, very is the library here. of McGill. Very, 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 very narrow, Please narrow white streets. It's a nice one. Narrow. Right there. Oh, right, right, I'm sorry, right. Right, McGill. There's McGill over here. On the right, the Faculty of Law. But people used to live there in the last century. The Faculty of Law here. The Faculty of Law, ici, à votre droite. On your left, Sociology. À gauche, la Sociology. Sociology over here. Now, the building that I like the most. That building here on your right, the Dean of McGill University lives there, Mr. Hutchinson. Le Recteur de l'Université de McGill de Berlin, à votre droite. The Dean of McGill University lives here. And in case you don't know, that street is called Dr. Penfield Street. Penfield was the first doctor in Canada to sterilize all his equipment before doing a surgery. Dr. Penfield, he was the first. La maison, vous, la, la rue que vous voyez, Dr. Penfield, Dr. Penfield est le premier docteur à stériliser tous ses instruments avant euh, d'intervenir lors d'une intervention chirurgicale. Chirurgicale. Unfortunately, there's a lot of buildings that are, are boarded up, all graffiti, unfortunately. But very nice buildings, though, but what a shame. They the wealthiest people anyway. live now in Westmount. It's on the west side. Les gens les plus riches de Montréal maintenant demeurent dans l'ouest de l'île. But some people in this area are really rich also. Because, hey, you're, you're very near the mountainside. Vous êtes proche des, des montagnes. Okay, listen to this, I'm sorry. All of those houses here on your left, they're all faculties of McGill, and they were all houses of the Golden Square Mile. All of those buildings, except one, all of them, they're all part of the faculty of McGill, except for one, and it's the consulate of Pakistan. They did not, did not want to sell their house, and McGill is trying for 25 years to buy. Ici, à votre gauche, ils sont tous des faculties of McGill, except McGill University. Qui est le consulat du Pakistan qui veut pas vendre à McGill leur maison. And it's right here on your left, that house. C'est ici à gauche. Parce que vous voyez le drapeau McGill ici, the uh, flag. Except for right there, that's the Pakistani uh, yeah. consulate general. Do you know why Pakistan is not selling it? Vous savez pourquoi que Pakistan ne peut pas vendre leur consulat? That street is heavily, heavily secured with security guards. Wow. Because there's a lot of people having money in this area. And it's McGill University and important papers and all that stuff. So Pakistan does not want to sell because well, the whole security, area is heavily they, they're secure, checking so all the house. And that technically, house. they're checking the house. Pakistani general consulate or the Pakistani government. So now you know. Wow. That is security here. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
No. Here we. Here, here we have the consulate. We have the consulate, but we don't have the embassy. Okay. Which street are you taking, uh, Frank? Oh, you're taking friendly? Oh my God, it's okay. What did I say? Yeah. I got Wendy here today, here in Montreal. Yeah, I like that. You see all the Canadian flags are all flying the half staff today. Oh, been flying half staff to the depth of uh, Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to tell you where to, where to eat. Je vais montrer, madame, vous avez su les endroits où est-ce que vous pouvez manger. I'm just like starving. Yeah, it's already uh, past 4.30 here, local time. Or 16.30. Or I mean, sorry, 18.30. Okay, Got here we wrong. go. This is 18.30. The best street to eat, ladies and gentlemen, is on St. Catherine Street. La meilleure place pour manger, c'est la rue St. Catherine. That is the best. The next street, not this one, the other one will be St. Catherine Street. The prochaine rue pour celle-ci sera St. Catherine. No, not this one, the other one. Pour celle-ci, long. Preston uh, Street like our, is on your our tour right will be side. ending soon. We're heading well, back to where we began, where they picked and it up. Preston Street is a street like, like where we are now. So it was a good tour, you know, the about three hours, grill, three and a half hours. good steaks here on your right. Ici, if you want to eat the beef de grillade, it's the place. Unfortunately, this is the inclement weather, which uh, kind of that's put a ring in our parade. Good, like, I couldn't bon. see that much. Yes. Yeah, so we're going to eat here. Steaks. 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 Now, this street, you've got everything. So, you've got everything. Saint Catherine so many things to see here and eat. Not street shopping centers. C'est la rue la plus importante celle-ci, la rue Chabot. And I'm going to show you a few places where you can eat and where to go if you want to go to the academy if you bring your bottle of wine. Je vais montrer où aller pour acheter votre bouteille de vin et d'aller au restaurant de l'académie. Okay. So that's Saint Catherine. Ça c'est Saint Catherine. Okay. Look here to your right. Regardez à droite. You see S A Q. S-A-Q. Buy your wine there on St. Catherine Street. And after that, you do only two yeah, streets. Right there. You're going to see Crescent. Buy your wine right there. Make a right. And the restaurant, the academy, is on that street. Donc, achetez votre boisson à S-A-Q. Vous faites deux rues. Vous allez sur la rue Crescent et vous mangez. Un instant. That is, that is Rubens. That is the best Jewish restaurant in Montreal. Ça, c'est la meilleure. Restaurant Juif uh, à Montréal, Rubens. It's just one street from here. Rubens, huh? And I've if you like cheesecake, Rubens. that's the place to go. Rubens. Si vous voulez manger de la bonne nourriture juive, allez à cet endroit. You can see the name, I can't see it. Oh, here we go. Right there, it says Rubens. Mm. Okay. That is Peel. It's a deli restaurant. We're going to continue, yeah? Jewish deli restaurant. We're going to continue. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in front of you, Please, please listen, ladies. Please, please. That is uh, uh, the Montreal Trust place. It's only two streets from here. Straight. It's going to be on your left-hand side. The Montreal Trust, 185 shopping places, 25 restaurants. And there's another place on that street called Simon's. Great place for shopping. So if you want to go inside, go to the Montreal Trust place. If you want to eat wine, I mean, eat wine. If you want to drink wine, go to the academy. Okay, other places where you could go. Uh, Belle Province, hot dogs, hamburgers, and also poutine. The best poutine in town is right there on your right. C'est la meilleure place pour la poutine ici à votre gauche. You got also two good also restaurants, the Peel Pub and McLean Pub. Deux autres pubs, the Peel Pub et le McLean Pub, deux bonnes places pour manger. Two good places to go. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our I want tour. to thank you very kindly. We're about to park right now. I had a good time, and I hope you had a good hope time. Er, yeah. And we worked together exactly. for three Hopefully hours. Hopefully, everybody had a good time, had a good tour. We did it. We did despite it. of the week, inclement weather. Okay. Bonne nuit, plaisir. We can see we're back here where we started.
Station. I'll be taking the train from Montreal to Toronto, back to Toronto, and then we're going to take a flight out on Tuesday to Vancouver. So thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you for joining me and joining our tour. Even though of the inclement weather, it just, yeah, it is what it is. It just happened that way. But uh, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for joining me. Thank you.